the time. Um, so we're going to take another look at this, and then thanks to Sarah, we're able to show you some visuals of how um, those results from that survey we did yesterday turned out. And then we're going to start looking at picking some different points to ask FWP to model um, and bring back to us at the next meeting. So it should be a fun day today. And um, yeah, we'll just kick it off by looking at this objectives list. So I want to ask everyone to look at this again. Think about if there's anything missing, if there's anything you'd like to edit or change. Um, and then once we're happy with it, we'll move on to the next step. So take a few minutes just to read this uh, fundamental objectives list at the top, um, and then we'll discuss. It's just the old CD and me, but can we swap the last two around? Yeah, the second week that order doesn't matter, but I think yeah. Same thing that. Yeah, ask yourself what success looks like. Make sure that's reflected in this list. Can I ask a question on the list? Go ahead. That's just like an honest question. I don't know the answer. Goes. What is the difference between maximized sustainability of lion population and maximized satisfaction over lion population by general public? Well, I think because maybe the general public has a different viewpoint than most hunters do. You know, their their thoughts toward mine may be a lot different. Or should it be non hunting general public? Yeah, yeah. that's what needs to be rewarded. I, I believe Justin was meant to capture the kind of the first one being more the ecological sustainability and the latter being. Public perception of satisfaction got the number. And there's the okay, so that that be the same. Be the we can work right. with so, so, uh, Number that would be sustainable in the future might be lower than what we're using. That's, that's what we'll be in the test yesterday. We can reword that to, to clarify. This is just an observation, but when I read those top fundamental objectives, everybody, I'm seeing kill more lion and all of I am too. I agree with you. And this, that's the maximum thing I thought about yeah. yesterday. You know, it's like we're trying to. I don't see one thing that's saying lower. Right. The means and objective is possible where we're talking about manage the older age class. And Tom's that kind of, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that group you just kind of said that we're trying to take more than I don't know, it just seems like it's success, you know. If we're killing more lions, and then we're also saying, hey, we want to maximize older age class, you know, Tom on our opportunities. <laughs> And I'm going to kind of narrow that. I think we can get rid of that personally. I don't know how we, it seems to be able to expose it. I mean, how you, I don't know, maybe think about that. But. Is there a reason that we want to keep 30 years? Whoever talking about that, 
to maximize the old age class get on. Is there a reason for that? I mean, is that like just like an emotional to keep? I mean, because people want to kill bigger toms or well, it's a concern of biology cow. Like when you go to town and they're there every year that's consistently showing the age class dropping and they're concerned about it. I mean, what's I'm just I just don't know what the concern is. I will have is it strictly toms or are we trying to if you want to talk about oh, good about about age class of older females. I mean Older females, you're killing a heck of a lot of deer and elk. Well, I heard someone also talking about that they, for the for the family group, the older toms kind of stabilize that. But they yeah. also kill a lot of big toms. Big toms will go in and kill, drag out a kitten, kill all the kittens. I mean, yeah. So they, which is kind of regulate their own population. They do kind of regulate their own population, but, but they I, do that if you if you have a tom that's running the show and you pull them out, the new toms are coming in as a lot that are going to do that. Yeah. So you yeah. he would potentially destabilize the population by and creating you create risk for the existing family group of removing the dominant toms. Right. I just think that's kind of like a narrow view of we're only going to maximize older age class for just tom for hunter opportunity. But what if you got rid of the, the two? Like if you're managing for an older age class of toms, the hunter opportunity will exist. I so the second statement may not be necessary. Yeah. With the third statement in there. Like, I just think you you could say you're managing for a older age class of lions and for yeah because the older females also really work to stabilize population. I, mean, I know this is an important discussion, so I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but those means objectives aren't really going to be used in <laughs> the analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we might be getting a little outside of our, our scope and, and goals yeah, here by that. But you, you guys agree with that? I mean, yeah, well, what if we throw in fundamental objectives up top of to manage for the older age class? Manage for an older age class line. I mean, yeah, male and female. Yeah, that's fine with me. I, mean, no. I, just, I just think when we say Tom, if somebody's in public or somebody's looking at it, they're like, yeah. why do you only kill big time Tom? I mean, I was looking at it from an outgoing standpoint to sell my husband. Right. That's what people want. Yeah, but, but if you're managing the older individuals, the hunting opportunities will be present. It's all kind of covering everybody now. Here's the question, though. So you want to shit can the, the big con deal? Um, what difference is it from elk, mule deer, big one, and sheep? They're all managed for the trophies. They're not managed for their so areas. They're managed for higher opportunities. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Know. trophy area. There's yeah, no, you're, you're going to get a big one sheep tag and go in and blast the 150 ram. Yeah, yeah let, that's true. Get, get your tag and go do it. <laughs> I'm just saying that the older age class, I mean, that like that doesn't have to be just Tom. Um, I mean, obviously, when you go out, if you hire an outfitter and spend whatever five to ten grand, you're going to be you want to shoot a big Tom, um, but the average, I mean, like. We pretty much shoot whatever. I mean, we're managing for wildlife. So when we go out, I mean, we kill. I mean, last year's first year, I killed about six females before that. So it's, I mean, it just kind of depends on what you do. It's kind of the person that I'm just saying the general public, they would read that. They would say, oh, why are these guys just wanting to kill? They're just want trophy hunters. They're just wanting to shoot the tom. And you feel we're kind of, kind of caught up on that. On the one word of maximize, like maximize yeah. means like, you know, all right, we're taking it to the extreme. Yeah. If there was a different word in front of that, all I mean, not just top right. a couple, but all of those, I Provide think we're kind of maybe missing the Good. multiple meanings of the word maximize there that says, all right, yeah. is it quantity or is it about an opportunity? Man. You know what I mean? Like to me, that word that, and I know we used that word yesterday because that's where essentially trying to do, but I think maybe the group is thinking of it from a numbers perspective versus did you say like a little bit of maybe a, a little bit of SDM speak, right? We uh, we structure decision making speak. Maybe, we yeah. usually use these terms maximize because in a perfect world that's what we would do. We would maximize all these things if we can wave our magic wand and make it happen. We know we can't, so oh, if wow. you can kind of tolerate the word and know that there will be trade offs and tensions between them, so maybe, I could, maybe you know, third and half in there, not nearly as offensive, right? 
could you just manage for a healthy class with lines, however you want to say it? Well, if you threw in like maximize uh, over each class and align into the yeah. fundamental objective that would cover males, females. Just, just while I make one point, if so, in regard to if your goal is to reduce lion population, you need to remove adult females. At a pretty, at a pretty high percentage, if your goal is to reduce lion population significantly. But that's not our goal. That's not our goal. <laughs> well, some people's goal. Oh, great. Probably the West. I don't think anybody's on the side or not. I mean, because we're all hunters. And... Well, there's the division starting. Yeah. Right. I mean, we all lie. I get it. Oh, it's all of us lying. Huh? Maybe oh. what we're trying to accommodate through the group here, if I can speak that way, um, is maybe have a healthy lion population, whether it's graded or lower. Okay. So, I mean, if if we're gonna uh, kill more cat, can we still have an healthy mm -hmm. population? Or if we lower the kill, can we still have a healthy population? So I guess what I'm saying is, we're just trying to have a healthy population in mind. I think that's what we're all concerned with. So I'm I'm seeing that for the ungulates, we say maximize sustainable, healthy populations of ungulates. Yeah. Could we just mirror that language for? The top bullet point there for lions maximize sustainable healthy populations of lions. Is that capturing what you're saying? That can be suggestion. Yeah. How, how about swapping sustainable with preservation? Is it sustainable preserving them? Kind of same. Yeah. You no, know, and you're further, you, you go to preserve. I don't yeah, there's nothing on the table as far as removing any of them when you start talking right. preserve. Right. And we're going to have a line season and mm -hmm. we're going to have a number whether we go up, down, or sideways. I don't think preserve would fit in with this, personally. It just sounds like we don't want to kill all the lines. Well, well, to me, if you're saying maximize sustainable, healthy population, yeah. that's the very first one up there. Yeah. Then you got maximized hunter opportunity. That doesn't mean you're killing any of them. That's the most that you can do. And then maximize hunter opportunity for lions. The most opportunity we can have for lions while still meeting the first one is sustainable, healthy population of lions. I personally don't see the conflict there. It's just worthy. It's just wordy. Yeah. It's just how you read it. Is that, means, it comes out the end, I don't know. Is yeah. that the best verbiage for? I think uh, I think you just described the SDM process yeah. really well. I mean, that's the SDM, yeah. the best yeah. verbiage problem for the SDM. Exactly. Process. Yeah. And what we're gonna do later is rank these and score their importance. So you know, you could all come in and say, actually, uh, maximizing. Uh, outfitter opportunity for lions is 10 times as important as everything else. And then that'll weigh the way the decision comes out. So that's a step that we're going to do next. Right now, we just want to make sure all the concerns are up here on the board uh, and reflected in these objectives. So you guys are the thing to go away? Or... Yeah, I don't see a problem with changing the lions. Yeah, under the means and objectives. Mm -hmm. By having a sustainable, healthy population, you're going to have problems anyway, right? An older age class. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. put yeah. all the yeah. lines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need to have the certifications like that. Remember, too, <clears throat> you manage hunter opportunity for ungulates. That doesn't necessarily address. The lion issue specifically. So, do we need to have a caveat at the end of that that says maximize hunter opportunity for ungulates while sustaining a healthy population of lions? You see what I mean? So, we have that. You kind of tie that. I mean, it's tied back to the first one, but it, it, to me, it says 
to me, that second one by itself says it has nothing to do with anything other than managing opportunity for envelopes. Mm -hmm. Right. You see what I mean? Like, if, we know we're talking about lines. We know that, but if that was put to the general public, they <laughs> have saying, all right, this committee was tasked with saying, all right, they address, you know, there's a lot of interpretation that can happen there. And do we need to have a caveat at the end of that that says, refer back to rule number one, while maintaining a healthy, sustainable population of lines? I guess it depends on, yeah. Right? Like, to me, that's that balance that we're looking for. <laughs> Um, you know, that statement by that itself says that. Is that, that right? statement by itself says basically do anything you want to as long as you manage. Is, is that a redundant thing? Or so I mean, I let's see, see what you know, what's the, the kind of are party we, lines. Are, are we just, just, are we just, is that a redundancy or is that? Yeah, it's, um, we have to split these things out. Otherwise, like they, we can't evaluate those two things in one single objective. So, so they have to be separate. Yeah. We're going to give, we're gonna rank it. Yes. And then, you know, as we think about the final reports, having some of this context around all these things, describing how we got to these points would be helpful so that, that people reading that can understand what you really need behind this. Because these things will go in a simple table that allows us to see, right, like the house example, how well we're doing each of these things for each of the different alternatives we come up with. And so we'll be thinking about maximizing hunter opportunity for regulates through management lines. And how each of the different, you know, increase and decrease of the line population might influence that particular factor. But a lot of people that read this have to be told twice. Yeah, age where, and the lines will play into your hunter opportunity for unusual too, because your bigger cats are going to be able to eat elk. So if that's a concern, then that's something you want to think about. But if you take away all the bigger cats, the cats that remain are going to really hammer. Your deer. So if you've got struggling mule deer populations, then that's something you're going to want to consider too. So if you don't take all the big ones out and then lose a lot of mule deer to smaller ones, so it means the age class and various areas may need to be addressed differently depending on what the objectives are. And that's why that is in the means objectives because it's some it's a means to achieving these other things. Unless it's a means in its own right that an objective in its own right to care about it just because and it's something different than the sustainable healthy population of wives. It can say in the means objectives, and then we'll talk about those LMU entities and things like that. But you might want to focus some of the age class um towards older wives to achieve different objectives for regular. What you're saying, like a big farm, you're gonna go out and kill just as many elk and beaver. Yeah, but if they a junior get more bang for their buck, they're gonna. And if you got little guys, elk aren't even an option. They're just not good enough. Not so until they're like, oh, nice. I get killed now. Yeah, maybe a cat, but like, they're not like, you're not gonna lose a cow over. I get that. I just, I get that. I get that. I, you know, you, you've seen it like in a publication somewhere? No, I just see it in all that area. Yeah. Okay. okay. Smaller lines, well, smaller things, bigger lines have greater opportunity to watch it. Okay. Smaller lines, not even go I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Is that, what do you think, Cody? Look at it in the Jewish class or the line. Yeah. 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 Uh, any any kind of digital cross reading paper. Can you? Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think that's true? Guys, we're getting a little scattered. There's a bunch of different conversations happening. Let's try to keep it all together. I think that's true to a sense. To a sense. I think once you get over the two, three year old class, they're going So, whatever. I agree. I mean, that's then. Ten years on Canada, and almost all the big towns we killed up there were run off on moose. They almost invariably the killed them, before. and there's tons of deer in that area. We never ever ran one off of deer. We never saw one off of deer. So I believe you 100 percent that the older age towns, the female, they're going to kill deer. Oh. And when you leave the when juveniles, they're going to hammer your deer. Mm -hmm. That's what they're good at. I think even still, as Sarah was saying, the reason that we care about this age class question is because of the effects it has on the lion population and on the ungulate population. 
So it's a means to those ends. And I think those ends are captured in our fundamentalist. So we can definitely mention that age class thing in the report that we write up. But just from a procedural standpoint, I, I think it, it's still a means rather than fundamental. So we want to keep it in that means list there. Um, well, if they're not going to read it, we better put it in the fundamental. <laughs> well, that, that will not work. Is that what you said? Right? If they're not going to read it, well, I don't know. I, I'm hoping they're going to read it. Uh, that's the idea. So, um, okay. Yeah, that's the Anything else folks want to add or change about this? I'm saying that our people. Saying I put it in. That covers. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't feel like there's a big division in, in us. Maybe some of us feel like the more gear and health we have, the more buy-ins we have. And so, how does that? How's that accomplished? And then. Some of us might feel a little differently, but I think ultimately we all are advocates of the lion as well as opportunities, as well as you know, I, I think we're kind of maybe we have different approaches on how that might be best dealt with. But I, I wouldn't I don't think there's a big uh, like I don't know that different from anybody else, right? You know. So that's yeah. great. That's a good place to be. So we don't have to solve the issue with this list. This is just the list that lets yes, us make sure we've got everything on the table that we want. So I think we got it. I, I'm I do. moving on to our next where we where we prioritize or give a value. We can always come back to this if there are evaluations we find that we're missing something. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Shall we look yeah. at some figures? Yeah. yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Just kind of see where So, Sarah is our, our MVP here. I put this together last night. Um, Sarah, do you want to walk us through what we're looking at here? Sure. So, Wow. Yeah, so explain. Yeah, so along the bottom, we have the percent change going from negative 100, so killing everything, up to 100% doubling the population. Each of these um, different rows are the different participants. We just gave you numbers, and we kind of organize things based off the people who are more reduced the population to the mid to the increase the population um, level. So you start at like the ones with very dissatisfied with um, those different percent changes and then the twos were dissatisfied the threes were neutral so those are the little tiny numbers on the side where the dots correspond across and then <clears throat> the fours are satisfied and fives are very satisfied so for example this person is very satisfied in the zero to 20 percent increase range and moderately satisfied them if the Little bit less than zero percent, so up to 10 percent decrease, and a little bit over a 20 percent increase, and then their satisfaction drops from there. Does that make sense? So you can see that there's actually quite a bit of common ground in this group, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you look at that average one. Yeah. If we take everything in average across everyone. <laughs> this is what you see. But mm -hmm. we should never maybe make a good comment. I mean, we're all people that have common interest in Josh here and, and with the biology part of it that come. If we had the general public involved, we may have. A lot of different graphs out there. Yeah. That's a consideration on that thing about. You, you, you don't choose have, the, we don't have a yeah. general public representative. You, you guys are the committee who's making the recommendations. So you can choose to think about that, mm -hmm. or it's really up to you. Yeah. Right. I'm reading this right. <laughs> Right around their chains, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's the spike. That's right over there. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's a pretty common. No, is it, there's really no change from 
return to the previous lack well, no year. change from this new regulation or this new quota. No change to the percent of the population. So we want to leave the population stable okay. over the next okay. six years. That's interesting how that how I heard that is there a pretty small swing there. Yeah. Percent either way. Well, even if you went back to the previous slide, I mean that's yep. I mean every every one except for that bottom bottom is pretty much well except for the bottom of the top. <laughs> There's a few people that yeah. want to reduce a few yeah. that want to more it's if you threw out the top and the bottom, mm -hmm. it's an app almost a dead even. So to go to, back to his comment about what would it look like if the public was here, the region two quotas were set by a public committee in 2014, and there was 12 members on that panel, and there was only a couple, two or three townsmen, um, and it was a, a kind of a, a real diverse slice of the of the public, I feel, and the quotas that we're still using today were are pretty much based off of the committee recommendations that we did in, in 14. So <clears throat> I think I don't think the public would change the graph all that much. So what we're shooting for today is to have you guys pick a few different percentage changes that you'd like to see evaluated by FWP that they can bring back to you in October. And this is probably the longer discussion, the emphases within the LMUs that you'd like to see, areas where you'd like more, areas where you'd like less. Um, but the first part is maybe looking at this, um, that cumulative graph and just saying, what are a couple of scenarios that you'd like to see? So for example, the last group picked, I think a few, decrease and, and maybe one increase not to anchor you on that you can do whatever you would like but I think we can we have the capacity to do three or four different scenarios so uh, you guys can talk about that think about what you'd like to see um, and they'll bring that back to you in October and show you what it looks like in terms of harvest numbers I guess my, my uh, biggest concern with a lot of changes right now would be is um, this is basically a new um, management control tool. It's not very old. And to bump it 20, 30 percent um, right away, not knowing what the, it could be catastrophic for population, it could be good for population. Who knows? But no one really is going to know. Unless you go through this for a period of years, like six years, and we're looking ahead and see how it works right now as we did as the quarter is off. So, I mean, you can always change it six years, right? Maybe it's too late for young, but maybe not. Maybe it's going to be okay. But to just go out there and blanket raise the quota 20, 30, 40 percent. Right now, no one's going to know what's going to happen, but it, it's just too much data that it's not good. Haven't we already seen that, though? I mean, we did that in the Bitterroot Valley, right? Did you see, see that? Uh, right in the 10 years ago or something yeah, like that, right? And right, it wasn't the, wasn't the result of that that like the recommendation from the department was like we could do was it 30 or something percent increase and still not impact population. I mean, didn't that just come from the department? We, so we've yeah, seen exactly. like a, bit, a large exactly. increase, right? Mm -hmm. Like a significant increase in quotas that we've, that we've already done, right? That, that whole study kind of, kind of proved like. Right, yeah, you're going to impact the population, but it's still a sustainable amount. But that was that was a big jump that they did. But right. it, it did change. It did change it. It left the female basically at all until my found out, right? And so that changed the age dynamic, obviously, because the females were still having a lot of little kittens, right? So it's, uh, it changed it, but we, you know, not maybe not numbers wise, a lot. The same age class, I guarantee you. 
Well, it changed what those cats are doing on the landscape. Like, you, like Josh said, these are killing big stuff, deer, or whatever, you know. It changed, it changed it. I think what I'm getting out of this is like, if we're afforded the ability to make recommendations in areas, I don't know much. I mean, I talked to Mark a little bit yesterday on the situation in but I'd like to more about what we get to see because part of it is we're hearing that there's a lion show there. And then the other part of that is that we're not feeling close. So, how does that play into this as well? Are you well, guys saying you got a lion problem? You know I mean? I'm the net. But I think some of, I mean, I'm not familiar with here with yeah. what you got going on. But like we talked about yesterday, you're not familiar with what we've done. What I've seen by this is I'm seeing that everybody's open to a little bit of change. Meaning, if I gotta if I gotta lower my quotas in the Boulder area to allow you guys to have some more tags or higher quotas over in the Bitterroot, but in the eco region we're keeping that lion population the same. You know what I mean? Like, I think to me that's what this is saying that we've got some we've got some room for some variability here if we have some more information. Yeah. Hey, Re hey, Rebecca, what was the quota? How many were left on the quota last year? Uh, yeah. Four, five. There wasn't very many. I think we might be close to 50, we close to 51, to a quarter. And then we, there was still, you know, left on exactly. I just feel like last year was such a terrible barometer. We had such a big snow year. Yeah. We did. And, and right. those, the average guy could sure. not get where he needed to go. Right. So I think that you yeah, know the ability to and that's the thought we made the run over last year. But yeah, you know, right. you know some pretty good stories. Well, even with that, right? It's like the, the quota numbers, like we need the quota number. Like I, I'm not a helmsman. I've been lying about them, but like you guys are mostly helmsmen, right? Like how many do you treat and don't shoot and then don't shoot, right? I mean you could fill those quotas if you really wanted to. What was the total harvest for the it was off. Awesome. Like easily, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's you're looking like, for any better cat, great yeah. cat, yeah. and it having fun of it. Yeah. I bring that up yeah. for, for the whole how many trees we bought. Well, if the shoe quota is left over versus how many trees we have, or is it closed? Then right. Yeah. 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 Yeah
no change for now. We would caveat that in areas that require greater attention, they can receive greater attention. And then you put the time and effort into getting a more accurate assessment of where the population stands so you can make a more educated decision when we reconvene in the future. So the idea of flying blind just because we've flown blind before and set harvests doesn't really sit well with me. Can I can I get some clarification yeah. on what we're actually doing here? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just I, I like I said I the way that I understood what we're doing right now is we're just going to come up with several scenarios of how much we can either have what would happen if we say 10% increase in harvest, 10 to 20%, 10% increase in harvest across the echo region. You're saying we're and then they're going to run some numbers and we're going to look and pick which one. We're not going to pick how much today what we're going to do. Bingo. But also, <laughs> also the way I understand this is if say we go for a 10% increase or decrease in the number of lions. We would pick the areas like the bitter that need some more. They wouldn't take tags away from you or yeah, quote exactly. away from you. We could just add some where they need it. It wouldn't be adding tags or wouldn't be adding quota across the whole echo region. It wouldn't be a blanket 10% reduction in population. Right. That, that that increase would actually be used in the areas that need it. Is that correct? Yes. Bingo. So, so today we're not we're not picking the final answer today. We're coming up with a couple of different scenarios that will come back in October and see how the numbers run, and then then we can start moving toward a recommendation. So we've got two kinds of scenarios that we want to look at. The first one, what points you know reduction, stay the same, increase three or four points that you'd like to see evaluated. The second thing is these LNU emphases or zonal emphases or uh, what do we call history? Geographic subsets that you wanna see. Okay, we'd like to see what it would look like to increase harvest here, decrease it over here. So we can we can do both of those things today and ask for that. And then when we come back, we'll go through and see, you know, what's the group recommendation from among those. But we're not making that final decision today, so yeah. And I'd just like to point out, so I've looked at a lot of charts over the last 25 years. There's one more dot on the left side both the two dots are higher up than the other two. So we actually are, I realize the highest dot is sitting there just, just at zero. But if you look, we're 25% more to the left, which would indicate a 10% not sitting value. That's the way I look at that. It is, there is one more dot higher up. Um, but what I like about the conversation is I don't want to take much chance from you. If you guys don't want it, we need one. That's what I'm saying. But more important, maybe some of us ought to get in the trucks with each other and come see that I'm dealing with down there. And then actually we want to come and help you. Because see, there is no outfitting. We've got one outfitter in Paradise Valley, and he doesn't have cats. There's no outfitting around there. So I'm not worried about whether the outfitters have one opportunity. There's no outfitting. <laughs> no to know. But what we decide here doesn't necessarily depend on you. Yeah, this yeah, you're in the wrong right. eco region. Right. You're so yeah. eco region. So what you, what you, I mean, it's more of a okay. This is what we've learned at this meeting, and how we next. You're going to have your guys eco eco region. Isn't that interesting? Though we keep there. bringing but, up what happened over there. Everything's going to stay in place to everybody. Don't disagree with me. You're, what you're, but what your decrease, but the increase you're looking for is way more than what I think. This group might be looking at as far as, as far as what happens to happen, and that's what we're talking about. So, like, if you guys have your information, you can be like, All right, this is what the, I was in this meeting before. Here's what they here's what these points were discussed. We need help here, but they may not need help over in the big, right? You know what I mean? So, that's I think a caveat too that I think needs to be brought up was that I appreciate your issues and problems you're having there. But that's a different region than what we're seeing here. Instead of just, all right, if I can get a bunk over in this eco region, you know, they can come and pump ours. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. right? It makes yeah. sense. Right. All I'm going to say is when I sit in that next eco region, this data is going to be right there in front of us. Sure. Everybody. She'll have, she'll, they'll have this up. They'll be steering us down this narrow corral towards the predetermined destination. Good thing you said that. Because that's what it is. It is. You know, I'm just a scared going down the shoot at this point. 
but it's I, I do have to defend. We are totally no skin in this game. That's why we're here. Does anyone else do this? You guys want to get a bird cats. <laughs> so I've been watching today. We've got a lot of people who are scared. Yeah, and we're, 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 we we just want to throw some numbers out. We can, we can, we can talk it out. We can throw out a number. I, I would say maybe looking at zero as a starting point, looking at a decrease, you could talk about looking at an increase. Well, it's really up to you so, guys. So we don't know if we keep it zero if the population is going to increase or it's going to decrease. So this is about the population, not the. Yeah, yeah this is the quota. This is we want the population to stay the same. If we if we pick zero, we want the same number across the board. But if they decide that zero, well, they, yeah, that's zero matter, change, they need to kill more cats. That's absolutely, that's what they'll do. Well, they already have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, my reach is forty percent increase. Yeah, so that's should to keep it zero. No, they to keep zero changing the cat population. No, they want to drop drop the population by forty percent. Yeah, and I think they did the same thing in the bidder. Yeah, yeah. we, we increased about 40%. About 40%. Yeah. yeah, so we're happy. But with that's the one year deal. They're going to redo it next year. So we're happy with the way it is over there. Just, just for clarification, um, no matter what, like you just said, next year, the biologists still have the authority annually to adjust quotas per LMU when the commission adopts it, correct? I I don't think no. Huh? So we already know that next year is a quota that that. we already know that we're going to see what happens at a 40% increase. 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 If the quotas are filled, then we truly have a picture, an accurate picture of what's going to happen if it's 40. Mm -hmm. So why don't we pick some other numbers if we're going to do like a study and kind of get an idea? I'd like to see what would happen with a 10% increase. Right. Decrease in, yeah. decrease in population and maybe a 10% increase. I, I have a question for yeah. biologists yeah. as a well. whole. Um, so, say the commission come back and yeah, we're going to raise it 40%, right? Across the board, we're going to kill 40% of our cats or reduce the population by 40%. And you guys still have that LMU control. How are you going to determine? Where that forty percent come from? Do you have to get together and say, "Oh, yeah, in order to get to that forty percent, do I leave my loan or what?" How do you get to that area wide forty percent? So if we so like with our mission recommendation that just went through that will take effect for this year, we are someone help me. Are we increasing the population forty percent or increasing permits forty percent? Increasing harvest forty percent. We need the I, hold up. I thought the goal was to reduce population. Oh, sure. they, they did do it across the board, but in the places where they're doing it, they adjusted quotas with the intent to just reduce the population by whatever proportion um, they they targeted for that particular line management unit. So we needed the eco regional estimate because it worked. Initially, with your modeling exercise, your, your exercise on an equal level, so we needed a rough population estimate, and then we determined the level of harvest needed, the number of cats to be harvested to reduce the population 20 to 20 percent, whatever that was that was designed by the commission. So that's going to take effect this year. So your recommendation will go to the commission and will take effect the following year. So that will be going to the commission for discussion next. So do you use that? Do you, do you get to that throughout the population estimate using it? Uh, the bitter standard? Um, so, in this particular EVA region, we're using one of those three yeah. estimates that we presented to you yesterday. And so, we'll be modeling all three of those for you to see what those effects are. And then, you guys will get to the from that point. Okay. Yeah, so at this point, what you're kind of like you're, you're being asked to give, you know, they run those five, those three models, and, uh, you know, what happens if you call for a 20% reduction, a 10% reduction, 
a 10 percent increase or whatever so whatever those numbers you pick then they'll run those those three models with us that end goal in mind on the impact of the population so do, do you remember did the last committee offer 12 percent increase in overall line population is that the number that they presented what was that mean the last the last uh eco committee did they was the 12 percent reduction in the northwest yeah. inquiry yeah i think it was 15 percent half percent reduction in overall population resulting in 40 percent higher parts space correct um uh, <clears throat> well, what is uh so there's there's a couple of things that happened. The uh the the Eagle Region Committee recommended 12 and a half percent. And a year ago, we took that to the commission and the commission adopted that. This year, a year later, they took a different look at it and they readjusted that. Okay. And so they're not for the most part throughout the Northwest Eagle region, they changed um and I think predominantly it varies, but what they what the commission did in the most aggressive areas was to make it a 40% reduction in six years off of the original population estimate. It wasn't in addition to the 12.5%. So, so just for clarification, the 12 and a half percent is not the reason that some of those areas have a 40 percent. Uh, what I'm trying to get at here is if we say we want a 12 percent increase or decrease, I just want in my brain to understand if there's not going to be all the little red marks that only doesn't now have a 40 percent increase. So, <laughs> so, so that was commission. So, yeah, so in, along with what Brian just said, instead of a 12 and a half percent reduction, this year's commission decided they wanted a 40 percent reduction or a 20 percent reduction or whatever. So, it's kind of you know, it was a lot. <laughs> we've got to end up over here. So, yeah. Not. Sarah, this is a technical question because we sat in a lot of these meetings. So if we extrapolate that down now and we put those top six dots on the flat line, what's the average mean of the what are we looking at? If the top the top six dots from flat line amount, what's the average to mean? What does it mean? What does it equal? The spread is between like 25 be about 10 feet or 25. Exactly. 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 So, Close yeah, so we use that exam. I mean, five, I, that's the only point I was trying to make. I look at that and see that may be a happy place where 40% is too much, but a 10% might be something that everybody can live with, specifically if you target your problem areas. Yeah. Your problem areas right. stuff. So I've heard two suggestions for 10%. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I say, since we have one or one multiple things, we might then choose one that decreases by some percentage that everybody agrees on, choose one that increases by some percentage everybody agrees on, yeah. choose one that makes no change. And then let these fine folks run the numbers, and then in October we come back. And we already know what's going to happen, and we speed. will know what happens with it bigger because we're going to see that. Issue. But I'm guessing when you extrapolate those two stocks out, that's a number that Tammy or everybody can live with if we did it in targeted areas. That's what yep. we're trying to say. Yeah, and again, Dave, you're not from yeah. those yeah. final summer. Exactly. It's, it's certainly not a 40% reduced no. yeah. reduction. And if you target it on specific areas, let's let's do predator management. On winter ranges, let's do predator yeah. management for where some, some be. not everywhere. That's, where that's a number everybody can live with. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah. last time, there's a mask. These were all in the same thing. guys. Let's uh, let's listen to Sarah. For, okay. <laughs> uh, for example, last time the group asked for like, let's look at it. Quite remember like a 15 percent decrease and you could ask for that across the board like they did but you can also say we want to look at a percent decrease that only focus on some local areas we don't actually want to do that everywhere so uh, you can ask for whatever you'd like for the science how these scenarios are possible to look at let's so the more you get the more it gets like busy with our yeah like, spread like, like, like we had eight last two. time and that was a lot but like three okay oh yeah many, three, three four, is great i think and also bracketing with like some extremes, like we might want to consider up to this increase or decrease allows us to really see how the whole thing plays out against your objectives. So we'll be able to explore those extremes and show why they might not be the right fit, depending on how they satisfy your objectives or maybe they are. Yeah, I think three scenarios pretty obvious too, because you get you get you've got extreme dislocation, but you look at that 
you look at this graph and what our stuff said, it's basically somewhere between 20% and 20% somewhere in there. So let's look at somewhere in that range. So let's say it's 10%, zero, 10%. That way, I mean, see both sides and the middle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, why? Why go through each scenario? Like, now we're just looking at numbers that we're never gonna get to. You know what I mean? Like, to me, the consensus says, "All right, so it's, even if we, so we should look at the extreme, even if we can see the graph, what's up? Right? Don't put in some extreme. I don't think so. Down. I don't think so. Like, why? Why would we pull it? Well, we right. already know that there's gonna be a forty. So we already know that that extreme's there. Let's do the extreme the other way, and we can see the graph. But did you hold, do that on each side? Do you see on each side? I would say only only do ones that you actually or feel like you would want to see. Why would like, 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 Okay, let's be, yeah, let's, let's be realistic here. So we're going to debate what a twenty percent increase would look like. Exactly. We're going to debate what a twenty percent increase looks like compared to what a twenty percent increase looks like. I mean, is that what we're going to pick a number and debate? I think I'm just based on that chart, that seems to me this is where the middle ground. Let's start with. Uh, I mean, 10 to 10, 10 to 10 percent. Yeah, 10 to 10 about 10 below zero. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that 40 percent reduction. Is already going to happen. Well, actually, that's the forty percent is only within certain LMU within the heat. Right, rate. but it's not a forty percent reduction. Well, that cost, oh, that's why I'm getting that is I'm not suggesting any. I'm right. just saying that's that already going to happen. So we're going to already see with that model. We didn't need to play that out. We're going to see that, right? So what they're saying so is, they're saying they're saying they're saying what I'm saying is. 40% is only within certain yeah. values, not a 40% across oh, all the right. Right. Yeah, right. Just wanted right. to clarify that. So that, that may work out to a 15% drop. I guess so that I thought there was going to be a 40%. Yeah, it's 40%, but it's just a certain LMU in the West Center. And I think they would have not every LMU would be original. You want 40, 40, okay, 40, and I had a confusion for me there. So the Right, that but that's what I'm I'm not assuming that I just figured, hey, that already is gonna play out. Yeah. So why right. go through that exercise? Yeah. So that's that's a point that Alyssa oh, just made as well. You, yeah, yeah, so the, the way it's worded is to the, the regulations that went through by the commission last year was those objectives were, were, were to reduce not my populations by 40% over a six-year period. So if those were if those numbers take oh, okay. over 10 10 over six years, that would reduce population to 40% or 20% or whatever the other okay. was. So we want to observe that data. They they actually not something to do here with, with our decision making. We're looking forward to that six year time period, right? But what we're doing here is basically six years. I would just say, don't think of this as like an experiment. If you guys feel like 40% is the number you want to recommend, just because that's already been done, you can throw that out. You can, if you decide you want it, you can keep that. If you want 100%, you can keep that. Um, so don't think about this as like collecting more data. Think about this as the recommendation that you want to make for what happens to this population in the sea region. Okay. So, what would, I mean, you guys are the, like, Right, the biologists, you guys are math experts. What what would you recommend based on our, our model and the, the the aggregate model? I mean, ten. I mean, our top six looks like it goes right, up our top to plus six are like eighteen down to about minus eighteen, 18 or fifteen wow. to fifteen, or you know, ten to ten. Like, I mean, I mean what, what, right? What 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 would you guys recommend? It is is going from minus ten to zero to plus ten? Is that a big enough range? For us to really be able to see the difference, or should we go 15%, zero, and minus 15%? Versus, you know, or do we do 40, minus 40, zero, and plus 40? I'm, I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, but I'm not a biologist. What, what kind of range would be reasonable for us to actually get a, get a grip of the you know, longest differences would be? If you can stomach if going down 15, you see what it looks like, but I don't think that's going to show you what going down 10 looks like or what going up 10 looks like. So if it depends the range that people are company with, you can stomach then minus 10, zero, and plus 10 would be decent models to look at it because then everybody can kind of stomach some version of that and we see what it looks like. And then we can 
argue about it and I'm building it. Yeah. Yeah. It's already have a bill then, so then we can say, well, what does 15 mean? Then what does it mean? So, yeah. yeah so because, I mean, it's going to be worth it. It's like a starting point. Yeah. yeah. You are really looking at parking curves, right? And as far as population yeah. and uh, only live population versus blind population, it's not going to, right? It's like if we did 100% either side, right? I mean, at the absolute max extremes, right? Those curves are going to be dramatic. That, and we'd be able to see that really easily. If we if we went minus one percent, zero plus one percent, that's not going to give us enough data, right? As far as as, as trying to make a decision. That's that's my big question as far as that number. I mean, 10 percent cool, but I mean that's totally fine. I think you'd see the market better, better engagement if you went 100 percent on that side. <laughs> <laughs> But then, as far as looking at data in the, in the future, what the models look like, so, you we want to have enough spread, right? You know, we want enough variability so we can see, actually see the differences. If we're too close to the middle, right, we just want to stay at zero. Right? If we want 5% either side, that's not going to give us enough data. Is, is 10 enough? That's, that's my only question. I think 10% is still see even good numbers. See that, yes. I guess I just try to anticipate as we score these out. Imagine we have like a scale like right. one, of like this doesn't improve things, right. and two, it does, and three, it's great. Or something like that. Yeah. If you think about a 10% increase versus a 10% decrease, that uh, maximize sustainable health of um, maximize sustainable healthy population of lions. But, can you think it. about ranking yeah. those different values? Because if they're all still going to be like, yeah, kind of in the center, then no, we won't see any difference in performance towards our objectives. And so that's okay if that if you like we can still go through it and try that. But you know, having those extremes will allow you to see why those extremes might not meet your objectives, probably, or maybe they will when you find that. Yeah. So yeah. One of the other thing I was going to ask is that when you look at everyone's individual score, if you have some people that are more on the reduce more and increase more, so we could throw in one of those for each of those different kind of uh, brackets to those groups and we can see how that plays out and talk about why or why not that might be able to meet our objectives. Uh, one, one thing one thing I'd like to comment on is we one tool we don't have access to we can do this for is what would the biologists recommend? What are, what are their thoughts on on the whole thing? I know it's hard with the PR plan to you and all that stuff, but we we don't we don't hear you guys telling us what that is information that we need. Well, I mean, I think biologically, most of these choices you're considering are going to be sustainable. And so, if where you guys decide to land, you know, it's up to you. Nina, you know, we're kind of putting five words on it. It's like, if, if you recommend us 100% decrease, we're probably not going to go with that. But, you know, well, you, you, you folks know more about this. I would know. So I, I would agree with that, you know, for the model runs for the, the I do think you don't want to do like, you know, a 1% decrease for, I mean, you do want enough variation there that I think to really be able to see the difference or whatever and stuff like that. So, so whatever numbers you pick, you, you don't want to do like, you know, minus eight, minus seven, minus six or whatever. I think you do want to, you know, that way it'll, it'll, just, it'll give you a better idea, you know, Okay, it's you know twenty percent reduction looks like this, and ten percent reduction looks like. So I do think you, you will probably and maybe Alex or somebody over there that does the modeling. Uh, I think you would want enough a, a fairly sizable gap in the variation to get a little better idea of what well, scenario you know. Look at stuff that you want to make better. So it's like it's five models too much. I think there's four scenarios, but we looked at them all. So that's one of them was a 15% and a 10% reduction. And that's what was, yeah. And then for each one of those scenarios, we allocated that it would be eco region wide, so proportional to the amount of habitat, okay. and focused in specific areas of the okay. So each, there was actually four scenarios kind of shown two, each of them shown two ways, so that equally. And I was like, all right, let's not do any more than that. Okay, that was a lot. Okay. So it's like, we have three times, we have three different estimates, so we're tripling. Whatever we yeah, yeah, and we need to show you, we need to represent the uncertainty 
get what we give you back to. So yeah. Those are magic like or just like three. Yeah, three would be good. Maybe so I just want to draw your attention to this. Hopefully this might help. This is from our Northwest East region. This is an output from our integrated population model. So if you look at the from the left over to where those blue lines all diverge, that's the population reconstruction to our point estimate at the time we're making decisions. The blue lines are the projections by the IPM. So our committee wanted to see a 10% increase, a stable population, a 15% decrease, or a 30% decrease. That's the trajectory the population will take over the next six years. And the IPM tells us how many lions we need to harvest for each of those scenarios. And then you want to go to a, a cheat sheet. So now the cheat sheet, this is what we're going to present you guys. So if you look at this cheat sheet, can you, two seconds, just scroll up a section. Um, so this is the status quo. So if we maintain the current level of harvest observed in the ecoregion, if you look at that top line annual harvest, go down one, reference annual harvest. That's the five-year running average of lions harvested in the ecoregion, 183 lions. So the annual harvest that IPM tells us, because it's status quo, we're still going to average 183 lions. Do you have a different shoot to look at maybe first? Okay, so if we wanted a stable, okay, 10% this would be better. So the average five year harvest is 183, but to hit that 10% increase over six years, we need 137 lines. So we need a decrease of 46 lines in the eco region. And then if you scroll down, we give you two options. We're gonna allocate it a little bit more down. Proportionally on the left, so there's no red zone. Um, so basically we're just gonna proportionally allocate that harvest across the ecoregion. region. Or if you look at the red zone on the right, that's gonna be the ungulate focal zone. We can intensify harvest there by adding lines and then subtract them from the remainder of that gray area. And I won't go into all the other colors. Does that help? Those, yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it's all to see that, that like yeah. that's exactly yeah, to see that spread. Yeah, like yeah. obviously, yeah. how wide, how wide of the spread is enough to see the difference in the data? So that was my question. We saw what thirty percent will do, right? <laughs> right, and we saw fifteen was kind of right in the middle. Yeah, and I'll add one point, which was the final recommendation of that committee was not one of those four things. They picked no. something in the middle, right? right. They, they picked. A, a final number that wasn't modeled because it was kind of between they pick 12 percent so a little bit less than that so that's an option that you'll have at the next one maybe you see the you got to tweet that out of the population yeah kind of like somebody pointed out those are down spread out those similar to bottle right i see the trajectory of the population yeah you know based on so that that's kind of what you guys want to do oh look at that yeah yeah, right. We've got, we've got, but you don't want to be, you say, I don't want to be, yeah, we don't want to do a reduction either. Like, I don't want to take 10% of my cash to give me that. No, you know what I mean? I don't want to give up the harvest over the I think they, what they were saying was they, what they would say is they don't take them from us. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what I mean. Yeah. But it was, they would say, all right, we need to have those whole areas, we need to add some more in those areas. Yeah. To that, not necessarily take your data. It might be what we need to do someday. Well, all right. Yeah. So I think you did it both ways. Yeah, didn't you didn't just split them up over over the whole thing, and then the other one is was targeted. Yeah. So yeah. we can see both ways what yeah. it would do. So basically, you have the same pool of cats in one of the instances, or like 226 cats at this model of whole acre region. So we can either describe that proportionally, yeah. or we can focus more of them in one area, but then you have to take those cats out to be spread amongst the rest of what's remaining in the acre region. So that'll be the next thing we do is pick those focal zones that you guys want to see. Uh, so the first is the first one to look at and percentages. Exactly, yeah. So let's decide first. We've got 30, we've got 50. I don't look, I mean, we've got numbers that should probably be pretty close, but I'm going to put 10, 10 down. I'm good. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Ooh, well, yeah. Well, what is your number? Yeah. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. Is it bad? Are we going to give a zero? Zero. Ten, zero. Ten, zero. Yeah, ten zero. We're hearing a call for ten zero and ten is the three numbers. Are there folks who would like to add to that or change one of those bookends? Yeah. 
And that gives us enough trajectory and enough. That's all I was saying earlier. And every, you know, anyway, just to give us enough of a graph so we can see that. Uh, and we might pull on the side of the graph. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And if, if 10 and 10 is big enough, then it gives us the enough data to show the difference. Yeah. Right? That's what I was worried about. What's what's enough? And if that's the value that we're building, we're going to start that time. We're going to be in the graph. So one thing that, you know, if you look at this and we look at the spread of what everyone did yesterday, we do see one person who's at the top there who's kind of really only expressed that they would be satisfied with a, a bigger decrease than that. So I'm just pointing that out. It's totally up to you to decide, but um, I thought we we're throwing the top and the bottom right now. That's that's entirely up to you guys to decide yeah. that, but I'm just pointing that out. Yeah. At yeah. at least one person here is not going to be well represented by a distant ten and ten. So they're steering us uh, down. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> at least we got something to go Yeah. We just want to make sure that we are hearing everyone's well, voices in this. Why room. did you point out the top and not point out well, the bottom? Well, they did. Okay. <laughs> the, the difference is the bottom one is is happy with a 10% wow. increase. So that's captured. The top one is not really reflected in our, our current three alternatives. So I'm just making sure that the, the group here is reflected. It's the opposite of steering you down the chute. I'm telling you what you said, just making sure that that's represented in and what you decided. Well, it's up full for 10-0-10. 10-10-0-10. All good. That's it. And the and those numbers will allow everyone to feel like their voices are represented in this, in this group. Yes. Sure. That's two people. We're happy. Voting that or stolen those. With the understanding that I said, these folks here, you know, because they are up against source, so they get, and then I don't know why they're trying to kill them all in Area 4, but. Because we don't have a source, we don't have Yellowstone on there. So if they're a, on board is the board? Well, that, that's where we'll get the targeted one increase. That's what he quoted. Well, the there's previous. Yeah, the previous, the one area was five and five. I think it went up to like nine and ten or something mm -hmm. like that. But, because like in our area, like two six one, or you would have, yeah, like about hundred percent. It sounds horrible. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. So you yeah. got it practically. It, it's unfortunate because we're not there. You got high quotas, and then they want increasing forty. Oh, so I do put it into perspective. You just say there's a thousand of cats and feed for me. We're talking about ten percent. You know, hundred cats to be the first. So we're up a lot of cats and. Yeah. I mean, ten percent is a lot. Yeah. So I mean, they could be able to do a lot with ten percent. And then we have to look at that thousand cats as accurate. Right. Yeah. Right. That's well, the biggest variable. Well, 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 that's the biggest that's the biggest that's already dropped that. Yeah. We're back to we're back to less than one. That's no. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> so it's making an educated decision based on yeah. what you don't know. But if you pay, you yeah, have about I mean, look at forty percent. But how many? Ridiculous. That's 400 cats or 140 cats. So but that's what we're talking to leave the regions, right? Yeah. Those, you guys are always out there on the cats. I mean, how many cats would you say are in the areas that you typically run? You just added that up and started looking yeah, at Yeah, I'm not trying to get it. I'm just, I, I just looked at what these guys did, you know, and, I, and I'm sure you put them in there all winter. Yeah. You're going to have a pretty good. Idea. 85 to 90 percent of what's in there is yeah. what they're going to catch. I, I would, yeah. and then then, then you then you average it out, and you're telling me so. Then you take the hundred cubic uh, kilometers. That's right. basically eight miles by eight miles. You break that down. Yeah. And there's 2.5 cats in every eight miles by eight miles. Yeah. And yeah. you could have it down. Yeah. So let's, let's take, take a five minute break. Out. Right. Let's right. make it Sarah's Sarah's the nice one. Let's make it 10. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, I always turn it to 10. Give us an yeah. Yeah. And we'll set, and we'll get into uh our LMU here. Great. Right. Yeah, Back at 930. Oh,
Thanks, everybody. So um, let's shift gears now and talk a little bit about the other part of this, which are these zones of emphasis. Um, I think we've all agreed that we want not the same thing to happen everywhere. So the question is where and what? Uh, so we can pull up a map of the LMUs, uh, start to have that conversation. Um, we can start broadly about which LMUs we want what to happen in. I think the, the simplest outcome in terms of uh, the modelers here is to pick a few zones of emphasis, but let's start just broadly, openly about um, yeah, where we want things to happen and, and what LMUs. Do we have any maps of like um, populations being over objective or under objective? Um, there are maps, but I have to do them We're about to we'll pull those up right now. Yeah. yeah. I guess for the folks in the group that are seeing like the, your health numbers are terrible and you're capitalizing, like, where are those districts? Two forty seventy two seventy. Clear goal for objectives. Two seventy is definitely not over objective for elk or under objective for elk. Do I screw up with those numbers? Within objective. Yeah, it's, oh. it's, it's very close to being over. <laughs> Sorry, I. There could be things that are wrong here. I tried to send these to all the other biologists have a look at them. I might have made some mistakes, and not every biologist got back to me. So please do speak up if you have questions about any of these. So we have the elk one, we can put our bed in front one on there, and we can uh, hear what's going on. Three, seven, four, fourteen, thirty, four, five. Well, I know, I know, though. I think I can talk to Adam Do we have the deer maps, the sheep maps, the goat maps, the moose maps? Please. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Hello, jacket. No. That's your real there? Yeah. 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 There you go. And we don't have the snaps, right? But the, the deer one, I, I don't know if we can add the deer one again. You we know, have to, by state statute. Yeah, but for 413, you know, they've been issuing hundreds of doe tags that uh, not supposed to be filled on uh, horse service, and everybody fills them on horse service. I mean, they get the deer, you know, close to the big population center. Gets. And I don't disagree with you, sir. I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm telling you by state code, by what the law says, that is you're supposed to manage predators because that area is below objective. Is it possible to see all these maps side by side and see if there are spots? But they all are old. Yeah, we're like, so where do these have a problem? So by, by the code, if you read it, it says no oh, really steer, sheep, so moose, goats, yeah. goat, steer. Yeah. But mule deer have a lot more problems to just get. Yeah. Yeah. We, we agree. I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, we need to go and clean pirates up yeah. and bulls and bear and bear. We could hunt us. And, and, and the other, the human factor too. I yeah. don't disagree with yeah. you. They didn't give us that to talk about. I was curious to see side by side and see if there's like areas where like there's problems in other areas. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. And what was the mistake in the elk one? Oh, right. 270 is doing them. Okay. Yeah, or we don't have it right. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't. I don't know. Not everybody. Well, so Rebecca agrees with it, but not all. So everybody says the like the 270, there's a debate of. Isn't the the migration? Remember that debate of the migration of elk coming in but above we objective. We account for that. I mean, it's it's a bigger town every year, so that objective is the winter the winter objective. But they're wintering on our place, right? This is elk I guess I deer. Yeah, elk big problem here. No, I'm just saying, are those resident elk? No, the goat, the spotted goat numbers at all. Probably all or not. Are, are those resident now? Because 240 is going to be. They're partially, partially resident. Everything partially. partially, partially. partially. Yeah. What's the, do you know the percentage of the migration on it? Is it like 30% or 40? I don't know for sure. It's like 30, 30 to 50%. And they don't all come from 321. Some come in. Yeah. So, yeah. 
you guys in the mid route, I, I, I don't want to run 250 much. Does that all click with what you're seeing? That's oh, man. Absolutely. It, I think they were special. Yeah. That's what we're seeing. I mean, the deer, I think, is low. And I think the down at the West Fork now. And not the West Fork? Like 20? Yeah, but it was like 40 last year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the highest it's ever been in 29. It's always been a small population. Yeah. The other thing, like in our area, like the 261 and 270 with deer and all the stuff, I mean, and elk, there's a lot of private land. So a lot of those are not huntable. I mean, we go through that debate all the time. They're not huntable elk, huntable deer, right? Yeah, a lot of private land. A lot of them are. There's, there's some private land that allow access. Where? CB <laughs> CB ranch. ranch. I mean, the big ranches. I'm saying with the elk winter, the deer winter, they don't allow. CB does. CB actually a lot of animals sell on the CB ranch. Yeah. And kids. I don't know. It's 10, 20, 30, not that. Uh, 16. So that's three of the six species. Do the other three maps? Yeah, we did that maintenance conference with some of the context. Yeah, I request that we have that in the next one. Yeah. State statute. I mean, that, that's what we talked about. Yeah. 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 Ye
instead of just jumping all over the place, let's so I think focus uh, our efforts on this. We have a map that's coming that's yeah, kind of going to give us already a head start on that for, from what they came up with this year. Okay. Delanese. Give us just a moment, probably enough uh, the amount to go data if we can find it. And it was based on ambulance hit Suggestion made. Uh, tell me your name again, Josh. Josh. Uh, by Josh, that we maybe put together a bitter root area, so decide on the LMUs that might go in that, and then think about the scenarios we would want for that. Folks, up for that? Yeah. Great. Okay. Yep. So what's what's going to go in there? Which numbers do we want? Two fifty. Two fifty. You know. <laughs> I'm assuming I right. lowered the number of tiered out. I see tiers in LA. Well, there's one there. It's strong. 45 and drops 45. Yeah. 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 Y
So no, no shoulder season. But they do still do take now. Which they shouldn't have. Well, I would. That's a price on the end. Yeah. Well, so not that's what. In the ear. One thing to get out of that. If you have been and you see all the parasites, I mean, during the days of heavy logging, this was one of the areas. Mm -hmm. And it's also very fire adapted. Like, and we have done a lot of work where ungulate forage increases greatly after fire to where the, the amount of digestible energy is equivalent to irrigated alcohol. Yeah. Um, and that has the logging is over mostly the fire. There are have been some big fires, even in 250 there's fire. Not very yeah. 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 Good helpful for it. Yeah, so it can definitely buy your size. Then come the area. My own deer selection for a bird area is for yeah. about 15 yeah. years. Yeah. I have to say, yeah. sort of one of the Yeah, like right now. There's a fire down at the top of the south. Yeah, it's right on the bottom of the south. Here's my hand. Well, we've got this one. Which was his so we've got a we've got a, a suggestion for 250 going into our bitter root area. What yeah. else do we want to go in there? 240, 270, 204, as far as the LMU, the 204 LMU, because that's 204 and 261. Right, the 204 LMU. So the blue line are the LMU boundaries, and then the highest curves are black boundaries. So, so yes, LMU 204. 204 there we go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you have lions on there. We see we have a, a stable population that is within what you'd expect, and we see the bulk of the cats that we see coming through are transients that we will likely yeah. one year and never see again. And I don't know where they go. That'd be fascinating for me to figure out. But if you're also, fit, for what, for what it's yeah. North 204 is where we currently have the litter in the litter room. Yeah. They seem to like, um, I don't know if that matters to anything. I just wanted to add in the, the, the whole litter room. That's Which day would you be Seems scary. That's for that. For that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you can look at those areas too. There's a ton of it. Well, yeah. it seems like 250 is going to have like. All right, let's, let's do 240, 250, 270. Yeah. And do, are we doing the 10% zero? And then, so if we reduce it by 10%, what can happen? Yeah, I think exactly. Okay. Yeah. Look at so, so we'll do that for, for the whole eco region, but then we can say like the Bitterroot could be an area where you want. More emphasis on decreasing the population or on increasing the population. So yeah. that's the part we're deciding. Yeah. I well, think down there we want to see about what it would look like with a decrease. Yeah. Can, can, I, can I back up a huge step sure. before break conversation? Right, like Steve was saying, right, you know, right now the whole bitter room was an increase, excuse me, decrease by 40%. Right, that's what's happening this year. Yes. Is it reasonable to ask to see that for our next set of meetings? Is it reasonable that I mean it's another set of data for you guys to run? But right, so we can see what that what expectation expect. is because that's what's happening right now. So yeah. reasonable to see that. So you can use that as data point. It might be a little bit of overkill if you want to drop another 10% on top of the 40%. Well, I guess, yeah, because it's going to, we're running the population now, so I, it would then encompass that time kind of period. So, do you mean for the, for the scenario of a 10% decrease and this emphasis area will keep the same quota until a 40% decline and see if that results in the 10%? Decline in the whole eco region. Is that what you mean, or what do you mean? I just mean to, to, to add that to our data set so we can see. Right, because well, then yeah. so that that 40% decrease is over the course, right? The projected course of six years, right? Mm -hmm. Right, same time frame as what you're going to do. This is this, this, right? I mean, would it be, I mean, we already have that happening let's, as far as the 40%. Doing that. So, that's what's going to happen this year, man. So, we'll probably see what's yeah. going to happen if you go after this year. Well, at least one error in all together. Oh, okay. So that's like, uh, you know, one of the things we need to achieve that kind of slots. That equal equal. So, like, does it need to be additional? Yeah, we can get So, are folks, are folks following what's happening on this map? Can Sarah, can you walk us through this one? Or Molly, can you walk us through this? <laughs> this one's based on the commission work in June. And so the the LMEs that are colored as pink are going to be 40% reduction that kicks off this year. The yellow are going to be the 20% reduction and the 30% are in blue. So you can see there's just a couple of those up in the northwest. And two of four. And two of four. So to get verify, they want to see a 10% decrease is that going to be on top of the 40 percent or instead of the 40 so it's going to basically replace what's happening now next year as the recommendation okay. theoretically so, so right now we're 40 and so next year it would so the, the thing you have to keep in mind is eco region though where instead of just like right uh, eco region wise these guys are just saying that right to set me straight our our numbers for this region is equal region wide, Correct. not just bitter at forty percent right now, essentially. So, but like, you may want to consider whether it's worth. Like, do you want to make that an area of emphasis because it's already going to get one hell of a winter? It's like you're going to see a forty percent reduction in cat sure. populations. Well, that's over years. six years, though, but they're not trying to kill them all this year. That's six years. Molly has to have that map with an overlay of the eco region. It might help folks. So well, you'll see a rapid, like a pretty big spike. There will be. But like I said, they're, they're still not back. wanting to kill 40% this year. They're wanting to do it. Yeah, it's it's going to get a lot of attention this year. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I, so I do think we can plan on forecasting this out as a status quo. 
Like that's what we did last time. Oh, okay. status quo. Yep, yeah. if we made it okay. so you guys can get that I can clarify that it's exactly the same for or keeping it only in the bitter but not for that. I think you don't even like him, but well, maybe there's specific stuff that the value during the while that value the current status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's something this works already in the browser. Yeah, to a large degree, right? Yeah, they just did. Should have hold the map. Yeah, so status quo is better for your party. See, it's a greater reduction than what we would change potentially. Well, yeah, what we're so we like, like our emphasis would like work. You're already in zero. Well. You think we're going to see a reduction? We've already admitted that. No idea within a few thousand animals or how many we're actually dealing with. So, so they're going out swinging anyway. They're going to go out swinging. It's based on coyotes and other predation. You know, we had up until the late seventies, lions were hunted as predators, and we still have plenty of lions to talk about. Coyotes were poison, aerial gun, trapped, and we still have plenty of coyotes because no one ever understood what the actual populations were. So even with the 40% increase or decrease over six years, you're basing that off a number that no one in this room knows. No yeah. one. So did the commissioners draw this for her elderly or was this biologist? It was Tabor's uh, <laughs> recommendation after the deadline. Uh, this is Tabor yeah. came up with this. Well, Tabor thinks beavers eat fish, so right. And... <laughs> <laughs> but so, if you guys, I don't know if any of you tuned into the last commission meeting, but there was kind of an amendment that started, and then each of the commissioners came in for their region and they modified the quotas and the reductions based on their regional input and preferences. So this is kind of a cumulative effort by the commissioners to come up with this list of reduction. So that's something to take into account because if we were like we're looking at a model of zero change, it's zero change from 40% reduction in given areas. So even if we decide to just leave everything as it is, it's already going to be a significant is, um, is that true? Because I've tried to ask that question about 10 times and I exactly. haven't figured out what that means. So again, so these are supposed to take place over six years. We're not going to see a drop 40% of the population next year. So it's going to be a decline to some degree. We don't know exactly what that will be. It'll depend on how the quota is filled, how this all shakes out. Right, but if we, but if we say do nothing, the next six year period, it'll, it's a 40 No, no it'll be from the point estimate next year, basically. So whatever the population is next year. So it'll replace the commission recommendation. So this is a one year deal? Yeah. So clearly this is not simple. <laughs> <laughs> the commission has, has given us direction on a trajectory they'd like to see it over six years. And so we're in the we're not even in the first year of it. We're about to go down into the first year. So my perception of any recommendation that this group makes will be based upon where the population is now. That's the baseline that we have the model forward from based on the, the capture recapture models and things of that. So if you say we want to hold things steady. We'll do the effort to go through the modeling to see what it would take based on what the population is now, what that would take in six years to hold it steady. And so we recognize we're right now, we're going into a year where we're going to have a recommendation that's, or we're going to have a quota that differs from a recommendation you might make. And so we may have one year that that differs from your recommendation, but our intent would be to take your recommendation to the commission that would be based off of the current year's population, not the current year's quota. So if you wanted to go to no change, then you probably look at something pretty close to what it was last year. If what would you expect if this version, the commission version, runs for a year? Mm -hmm. What would you expect to see a uh, difference in harvest totals out of the bitter root? And how do you anticipate that impact on the population? 
So in a lot of cases, and I have to look at the specific numbers of how the code has changed. Um, and I don't know, I couldn't tell you what the change in that quota uh, would look like. Um, and I don't know if anybody else has that number handy, uh, what it changed for the better route, the change in quota was last year or this year. If we were to make that recommendation, you know, the, uh, we, I can't tell you without running the, the math through the models, we have the same to understand the models better than I, uh, to, to kind of run it through there. But um, obviously, if we've increased it dramatically, we're going to see a reduction. Um, but it was also something we can we could we could compensate uh, in the models. So you anticipate a single year spike in harvest, no matter what. They have increased the quota in several of these these units, and sometimes uh, in an effort to get a forty percent reduction over six years. And so I would expect to see a spike in harvest. And then what we come up with. May go into cut back two winters out, mm -hmm. and you would look at the data on population prior to the single year spike. So, if we recommend that the bitter roots still remain an area of emphasis, you would look at prior data. Are you going to look at new population data to decide then if our recommendation of area of emphasis, like they were like, we want to see kind of the bitter root, but that already happened, right? right. You know, the zero year spike. Then what happens? So, if you if, when we look at that, say, we have most probably the North Eco region, you know, there's a period of projection. Yeah. And what we, at this point, we don't know what the harvest is going to be. You know, in some cases, you increase the quotas, and those quotas aren't reached. Yeah. And so, it's difficult for us at this point to predict what that's going to be. But, what we'll do is we'll look at that over time. One year change in harvest. And even if, even when we, even if the commission adopts the recommendation that we provide, the harvest rarely is precise. It, it's going to vary. And so what we, what we have is the ability to continue modeling that over the next six years. Um, as we go through this, and then we'll come back and, and look at, you know, number one, will your model of work are we able to attain uh, the harvest we realize to be attained, the population we, have, we expect to? And the other part is we can adjust those quotas, um, you know, next year based on the harvest, what happened this year to attain the objective that this group may recommend. So if we keep it as an area of emphasis, then it will it'll stay that way. There will be increased hunter opportunity, but it may be a gentler hand with that than 40% based on what the commission said. That, that's certainly one scenario that could play out. And, and I don't know if you know, Sarah added under one of your model runs to look at the static poll based on the current recommendations or whatever the 40 percent reduction so one of the model runs that you will have for your next meeting okay is we'll you'll see what the projections are with the current quotas that will go into place this coming winter that'll be good important so with that i said that'll be important Thanks. yeah so that so in addition to your 10 zero and 10 percent increase you added that to take a look at this and then the population would be with current quotas yeah, I think another way of describing this, I don't know, I'm not a pilot, but I always find it using pilot analogies, so I may be really flawed. But, you know, you, you have this goal to try to um, land on a run that hits, you know, 600 or six miles. And whatever this group, you know, sets that objective at, we're going to you know, get autopilot and not autopilot, but we're going to set the trajectory to try to land and set on that place six years from now. If we get some turbulence on the way in, it may drop us. And what we'll do is we'll look at those models and we'll adjust to try to still get that 
back to where it was. If we go up higher, you know, we don't harvest enough, we harvest too much, we'll make those adjustments in our recommendations to try to attain that harvest. So things may not be exactly precisely where we want it to be after year one, but if the commission adopts this recommendation, we'll make those adjustments in order to try to uh, achieve that objective. Okay, so it's an area that has been identified as needing attention by both the commission in what we saw and by us. So leaving it as an area that needs attention seems reasonable, but coming up with an adjustment on our end that is a little bit more aligned with what our numbers are being ready to go. That was my question to you, Kevin. If you knew what the new quotas were this year, would that change? I mean, obviously, you're still voting for a reduction in population, but does that change based on those, those new quotas or what they view as a reduction? Does that change I mean, something to be done? Does that change your perspective moving forward that our action is done? Yeah, we don't need to, we don't need for sure. And that's the only thing that we're asking yeah. so yeah. yeah. right? Like, like that, that I wanted to know that like, we don't have a crystal ball and I am right. this trajectory analogy. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out. But we're going to have not well, a so ball, but we're going to know yes. better and have a better idea yes. what we know what the is going to be this year. year. Yeah. So for like two or four, the quota last year was three and three, and this year it's going to be four and four. So we, I think we're going up 16 caps total, right? I mean, I think it was 40. I think our last one was we I can't try it on. And he had 40 crop all the yeah, yeah, crop all districts. So you're talking 16 cats in that whole region from the Do you want the numbers? Yeah. So do you want the harvest or the quota? Quota uh what the number? The quota number? Yeah, the quota number. So last year in the whole bitter room, the quota was 15 plus 20, 35. 30. Well, that's not including the that includes the special line, like the, the draw special line. Okay. Line. okay. Um, and this year that'd be like 40 percent right well, this year it's 30 plus 40 70. Mm -hmm. well that's, that's big i just we're, we're confused on the timeline of events here so i just want to this is from the northwest eco region so we're going to mimic what we did for them so this is not your the data for this eco region but just the, the timeline so this was what we presented to them at the second meeting so we've got this population model that gives us a population estimate through time. We have the secret estimate. And when we had this meeting, the 2022 season was already set. So they're talking about a six year trend that they would like to see, but the one season has already been set, just like this coming winter has already been set. So the population estimate is the year before. So we've got a population estimate from you know, last year, we've already got a season. And then go to the next slide. And we're talking about six years after the population estimate with one season already set. So we're going to make that projection the way it is, but we still want to achieve this after six years. So we'll account for what the commission has already done. And then what is the harvest needed? These are the scenarios they wanted. And go ahead, Sarah. So then we projected out five more years after that. So given whatever happens, so this coming year, there's going to be a decline. But for your 10% increase scenario, then we will account for that decline and say from the year before, given there was a decline, what would it take to get to a 10% increase in five years? Does that make sense? So that's the timeline of what we're talking about, just so we're all clear on that. There's one season that's already been set in your timeline of six years. Okay. Oh, I was going to go back to Josh, but yeah. um, out of the 76 that she's talking about, I think it's like 40, 12, 14 or 16 or fall archery, aren't they? Fall hunting club. Yeah, for the fall hunting, yeah, but there's not that there's not a photo for the fall. It's just that any line harvested in the fall get for the same production. But then those, those that 16 don't go back into the quota, do they? No, they yes. do. It, it's a single quota, yeah. but you're only allowed to take the 20% of that quota during the fall or archery season. 
but it still comes off that quota. So that's 76 numbers, the actual? Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll give a caveat to that. So, so when I look at the numbers that... Uh, is that oh, and and, and yeah. right? does that number that the commission increase to yeah. is that special line licenses or not? Yeah. Okay. So so I have to go on. So the actual quotas that the commission changed to didn't include those special line licenses. So the number I gave you, I added them back. So it should be six points. Well, we're still going to have those special line licenses, um, I think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they, they didn't get harvested at a very high rate last year. So, so yeah, the actual number would be in the 60s. So it's going to get a pretty serious investment. Yes. So are we feeling pretty close to happy with this first sub area here? Do we want to try to do another one? Sure. Is there another area that folks would like that's two four thirteen four we should have yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll put we'll zoom in on that. I may hear that this as the where um one of the challenges you will obviously face in the bitter root if you can slide over to that map is for those of you not mountain lines don't stop at a state line. Right. Mm -hmm. we, you know, that's one of the reasons we, we've gone to the eco region is to compensate for mountain lion immigration, immigration over large distances. So, yeah. you, you, those of you who live over there, you know, you've got Frank Church Road or something that has that So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what the cell is. Yeah, the cell is Yeah, the yeah. cell is Yeah, yeah. yeah. Both of the carriers shut the hunt lines and everything like that. Well, that's just, you, know, you can't go, I mean, the 240, you can't you can take a bunch out or just keep coming. Yeah, yeah, you can't go there. I mean, that's, you know, killing out a little bit. So, but you could be getting an influx of the, you know, the, 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 the ramp up harvest in the bitter areas and you get more of an influx and the line to move up. I know the bill will be making so we're we're looking at 413 and 447. I think we have a couple of me had the 40% off. Oh, Four eleven has like eight million elements that show up in these. And are you uh Looking for a particular kind of management scenario here, or what are you what are you proposing for this? Yeah, blow that up a little bit. Here we go. Yeah, it's 47, 14. I don't know why they want to go 40%, but stable or plus 10. Then you get over that 410. Is that, yeah. 410 is not actually being bridging again. This is, I apologize, I'm mistaken. Some of the LMUs changed. Boundaries mildly, so 413, 413, is within the West Central, and 447, 410. Oh, so okay, the Eastern Eagle region, I guess. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. So that boundary has just changed since this pulling yeah. on has come together. So that little bit of 410 is not actually, I didn't put the okay. right, the new updated one. So that little bit of 410 is not actually. Well, that makes it easy. It goes right to 413. Stable or plus ten, and four thirteen. Your can we put an objective for us or above objective? I think it's above with the man. Can we look at that? They were above. Yeah. They're, they're above. That I should believe lines targets. Yeah, and the year. And then I believe the same thing. Three ninety one. Yeah. So and then uh, uh, we'll get about the and, uh, the big small word sheet as well. Throwing the box and uh, the uh, 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 it's actually leave, leave a couple more up there. Yeah, yeah you're, you should not move the box. It's got to be easy. I'm going to get everything else going back up. Thank you. Sorry, man. It's painful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So what's the one on the right? The dark red. Uh, this is meal deer. Yeah. Are they good or bad? And dark red is below objective. Fine on elk and not great on meal deer. And above objective. But like three ninety one. It it's above bulk. Yeah. So that's so that's, that's what ten, leaves more lions in three ninety one. Yeah. Takes more down there. Yeah. Well, three eighty is already getting a little increase. So, but we would want them up below the check there. So, you wouldn't have some of the water. But it's already seen it. So, it would be an area. Yeah. 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 Y
Guys, we've got a question here that I'd like to have the group listen to. Okay, well, thank you. Unless we target an area specifically for an increase or a decrease, the way it's going to come out is no change. Is that correct? No, no. So we have to go through every area and say whether we want no change or whether we want to increase or decrease. We're just picking four, I think three, three areas. Well, pick a few areas of emphasis and the others can kind of adapt around those. Okay. So, yeah. We don't have to go through every single LMU if there's ones that we're less interested in, but we want to make sure that those areas that this group thinks are most critical to address either increase, decrease, stay the same, Get those on on okay. here so we can. That's what I was trying to do. What I noticed in here too is the center. We're kind of wanting to stay the same one. On the right side, we're taking some lines away, and on the left side, we're out. Yeah, boils down. Yeah, right. When we look at so it evens out. Yeah, if we look at the target map, I mean that should kind of guide our hand. What should increase? What we're state to state decrease? Right, like 380. Clearly, to me, if we're looking at strictly model lines, which we are. 380 is problem area. So it's like 250, clearly. Right? Because yeah. it's below objectives and unfall measures. So that should be a target area to increase, well, which they did. Which they did, but that should stay so as far as our as far as our right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As far as it, it still needs to be taken more like this. One, one thing I have to say is it's below objectives for Nelson. There's no mention of deer right here now. 370, 350, maybe not 318. They're all below objective for new deer. All of them. Yep. And I don't know about 318. I think it's probably below yes. as well. So, yeah, sir, just had it up there. It's why are we talking about it? We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got, got three, 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 three data sets you have available to us up here. So, my yeah. question for the group, though, is if you've got your local cabinets and they're saying we don't believe the gas is a problem per se. What is there a directive we can give the department to address some of the other variable factors? Because, like I said it yesterday, guys, we're not allowed to address anything but mountain lions. Like, we all understand that they're not the driving force for 90 percent of this. I don't know if there's wolves, but I don't want that area. Yes. What is your bear situation like? What is your coyote situation like? Coyotes play a huge factor yeah. in mule deer survival. Agree. Look at that that little hand for instance right there. That area. That Little area, it's a big area in Montana, but there's over a thousand buck needle deer tags sold yeah. every year. That's a problem. That's a huge impact. Whether you're killing them all or not, yes. doesn't matter. And we see that in pressure state. out there. Both like factors. All kinds of factors out there. Uh, the coyotes are big, the, the human factor is big. I mean, lions are big. I mean, it's all, it's all there. So, I don't know. What you're after is put you new years for a few years, right? You take higher opportunity, way people are going to really crap themselves. You can't do it, really. That's the whole goal of all our management stuff is for human opportunity. It's just a big game farm out there for people. Why are we saying people are the most important thing out on the landscape? Why aren't we saying, okay, let the lion have the elk, let the Bears kill the calves, you know. It's we're all looking at just human consumption. Well, that's your biologist. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a bad idea, right? We kill them. Is it increase harvest in three? Well, what are you saying if you don't? What were you saying about shooting meal there? Quick did you shoot? You there's a thousand, there's over a thousand there. permit. There there was thirteen hundred. Unlimited tag sold per year in this in 380 up until two years ago. Now we've gone to a permit system. I think what we started at this number that we we sold yeah, previously when we were directed to go from unlimited. So there's still over a thousand thousand dollar tag permits given out. That's ridiculous. I have a, I have a butcher, that's it. I have a butcher shop in 380, and I butcher maybe. 40 or 50 deer a year. Not many, because we don't have many around. But I never see a mature buck come out of 380. Never. Ever. So to me, that's a management problem. That's a pure management problem. It's not a lion problem. It's bringing human pressure down. 
I would agree to 100%, but I will I will tell you, we do, I do see a fair number of mature bucks when I do my search. Yeah, you got to be up on freaking skyline and maybe in midwinter, you know? Yeah, but I, I get a quick question. Somebody at 391 as an increase, what was the thought? Process? Just because the, uh, the ungulate population is above average. What's that? It's above average on the ungulate population. They're giving away a lot of cow beds. There's a lot of well, that's um, another problem I see. And Adam did a really thorough job of flying this year. I really think he did. And he, he did a really good count. But he missed a lot of periphery elk that I know for a fact 240 of them went back into 380 on April 1st. And we watched him do it. And he never counted those. So given those 240 elk, that puts you over a decade. You're only 100 under right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> So that would put you over a decade. So given that 100 elk that we're talking about 380, we're going to drop the population of the line by 40% just because of that? That's sick. Doesn't make sense. 10 lions in three. Oh, wait, 11 lions. 11 so was eight and four. Yeah. So, you know, three, three 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 there's all kinds of factors out there in management groups. Predation there, only factor. And you got patrol people where Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it's like on, on 391, uh, over checked on elk, right. most of those are probably 90 to 95% of the elk behind this were around 200 miles. Mule deer were at the very bottom end of the well, we're just one, barely one, one, get over. We typically fill a line, quotas, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 but, yeah, 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 it's easy to fill line holes in there, but I'm just saying the, the mule deer that I see in there are all in the subdivisions, you know, along that whole side of the lake. Every campground has got deer in it. I was just wondering, I yeah, now it's only If you increase the line, I was just, uh, I didn't know what the thought To increase the population to bring the end of the That's that, that was my problem. Why is it that when we're over over objective on elk numbers, you want to kill more lions out of there? What well, doesn't yeah, they, that's what I'm saying. It should yeah. be the ops. Right. Leave lions. Yeah, lion don't have hunt. to ask permission to go hunt. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We have to go hunt. back into the same camp and say, hey, what the heck? You got to kill the lion because we're killing elk. You know, it's all kind of So we've got three kind of Areas of emphasis listed here right now. How are we feeling about those? Are we missing things? Do we want to add anything to those? I think the no change part of the 380 and that stuff comes from that. Like you said, if you want to see what that projection looks like with that increased number of lion tags or what you know what that population reduction looks like in that model. Um, all of those, the 250, 270, 240 with decrease are faced in the same treatment, single year treatment that right. 380 and all the yes. no change stuff. So, do you want the bitter root to be no change or do you want to still have it be an area of emphasis for decrease? Well, like I said, this model, if they're going to show us, isn't going to include that. Yeah. This is going to yeah. be used off the population from last year. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. But the numbers that they're going to show us aren't going to include that. This will be a recommendation to the, but it'll be an eye opener next year to see right, it. Right. And it'll be a, it'll, it'll be included in the long range when it's a real. Yeah, but you're looking at, you've got the same situation in 380 as you have in 250, but you're putting one as no change, you put one as decrease. So what's the, I mean, I mean, we don't have this holistic approach for all lots. Right. We all, we, all, we all took charge first line before we had the discussion around this 40% hit coming this winter. So, so, so I'm not familiar with the 380. I don't understand why there's no change, but so I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if we look at the already the numbers being below the target, target to, to, and all we can control in this room is our recommendation for same more or less that's yeah, all yeah. we can do about on lions specifically is it fair lines no but that's all we have right now that's all we can do right that's the only change we can recommend from this room and if we look at the ungulate maps to focus on the ones that are underrepresented or under targets those should be the ones targeted 
to have more, right? I think about more lines taken out. Yeah. By I, how many? I don't know. But I, I, think that, that that job. I just want to be sure we're applying the logic equally. Yeah. Right. And that's where 380 to me should be decreased population of lines. Well, that's well, the only part of the cash. We're taking into account we're taking into account that because we had an increase. Yeah, we're adding that into account in that state. We're at it. Yeah. Yeah, but then the bitter is not. Right, so, and so you all have said no change on creating because it's getting a reduction, right. but Bitter Root is still in the same. He, he even now his, his right, yeah. I mean, so like Bitter is going to seem like that's good. Yeah. So yeah. we're treating it different. So if we were just looking at the map and we didn't know these areas, we would, yeah. right? So the increase one, in 380 one, based three, on the budget, and that's probably about the increase of two one. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were talking. So you continue to see Did it. Did I get that? Yeah, out of the committee, or you all spread yeah. out all throughout the district, right? So I uh, spoke from 380 and hung around that area. You know that there's uh, underlying problems other than than the days that are the right. So here, uh, you know, so applying Josh's logic here, basically, we're saying we should be saying one of two ways: we either take into account this year's reduction and move forward from there on both scenarios or we don't take into consideration this year's photo adjustments that would make the 350 380 318 a decrease in population if we don't take into account this year's quarter for yours what you're deciding is to just continue to decrease but make it gentler than 40 yes so just for facts, the, the 2022 quota had 386, and the new one this year will be 11. Yeah. That's why we negotiated. <laughs> yeah, that's why we changed. Like, we're, like, like a lot of lines. so many lines. That that area. Kind of like, the most we ever had was 14, and we killed them. But for the last one, we killed them in February. So then running on that logic, bitter, it's going from 35 to 70 something. So... Do you want it? We've seen it go down. Do you, like, how do you want to like? I, like well, you have to let's take that. You need yeah. to make sure you're getting the prices as well yeah. with your OEL population. That's the thing that you're getting at the bottom end. That's the thing that you're getting at the bottom end. That's the thing that you're getting at the bottom end. That's the thing that you're getting at the bottom end. That's the thing that you're getting at the bottom end. That's the thing that you're getting at the bottom end. That's the thing that you're getting at the bottom end. But yeah, there's underlying factors that, and that's why you went that way. We we're just looking at the map. If I had my would yeah, I would not be the mountain line. I don't think regional it would be the predator advantage that based on state statute. Task what do you mean? Field? We oh, already have some other already, already, already yeah, kind of yeah. 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 yeah, so but I, I think we might have saying in all of those. I'm just looking at the regs here. here. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 You know, well, I'm just trying to apply the logic equally. Yeah, so, yeah, if yeah. the bitter is an area of concern, it's going to see a significant harvest increase for one year. If we recommend that it continues to be an area of emphasis, well, we can thing. recommend a gentler harvest increase for continuation. Well, they can still make two bottles. Yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. this other guys, do you want That's to see true. like, one, one, so yeah, two, if with all of these, you see increase, decrease, yeah. nothing. Then I'd be curious to see what all that looks like. Is this doesn't go to the commission right now. No, you know, this, so, so we're going to be phase it down. Say, all right, we're going to look at the data and yeah. then bring it up. We'll have phase yeah. yeah. The good news is yeah. one of the outcomes will be to apply that ten percent increase, zero and ten percent decrease Most equally so. over all the yes. LMUs. Yeah. So this is just about the additional. Okay, where do we? If we wanted to do it a different way and look at what it would look like. To emphasize increase or decrease in particular areas, what would that look like? You don't have to decide on that, but you can get that into that's what we're talking about right now. So what I'm hearing is that there's a lot of folks in the group who would like to see what it would look like if we took 240, 250, 270, and said, what if that were an area where we tried a little heavier decrease in the population um, to meet these broader eco-regional goals? Doesn't mean we have to decide on that, but I'm hearing from the group that that's something you'd like to see. Similarly, groups wanting to see what if we increase the population in 413, 391. Um, you don't have to decide on that, but you'd like to see it. So as rich as this discussion is, I, I just think we might be getting a step ahead of ourselves and kind of thinking ahead about what we're going to decide and we're not quite there yet. 
So what we want to do is just make sure that today we capture any of these sub areas that you want to see what it would look like to have an emphasis on decreasing or increasing um, in those particular areas. So um, we've talked about a few of them. We can keep keep talking about them if, if we're not yet settled, um, or we can look at others that we haven't yet talked about and make sure you get Cody, there. do you have any areas of concern that you wanted to? I would like to see what it looks like with an increase in the upper car port. So let's move. And so increase in flying population? Okay. In which where? Upper car port. So 213, 211, 210. Uh, I lost my navigator here, so if I can set that up for you. An increase in population. So we'll change that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -oh. Excuse me, boy. All right. Oh, <laughs> We're trying to get in on this 213, 211, 210 area for all the uh, three yeah. So that's the uh, five greens there 211, 216, 210, 212, and 13. The real MVP right here. <laughs> Is that right here, Cody? Those what district? That's we're right we right 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 over here. Yes. Yeah, you heard. And we're, we're on the border of 214, 213. Yeah. So I heard 213, 211, 210, 216, 212, 212. And deer to the right. right. Yep. Uh, yeah. So the elk that's where the deer is. Let's walk back around. Nice one. I can't pull somewhere. I can't pull I Add, subtract to that. Looks happy with that. Is the addition? What's going on with your deer there? Do we? Do you, you know, sir. No change. Let's say they've been down for since the nineteen eighties. Toothkin's been a permit area forever. And across the road, it's two eleven. It's open for everything. You yes. can't permit just here. to double clarify your thing about increase yeah. and so I am not really sure. Yeah, I'll get there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a couple of questions. Any other? Let's get to the front line. Let's just take the 13. 213. Okay. I don't know anything about the about the area, but like 280, that left hand map is like the elk. We look at that area across those three species, right? We've got the deer and the elk are not at objective. 280, 281, 84, 90, and 293, right there. Yeah. Right? They're low on numbers for this map. I would say that'd be areas to target for increase. Of uh, lion harvest, so lion harvest to so a decrease in population, decrease, decrease in population in those. And we're, we're getting in the weeds so, again here, but it's that that area's got 15 more packs. Yeah, now they just and yeah, that's nice. Yeah. But, but all we, can we, can, right we now, can, all we can control right now yep. is okay. our, our recommendation. On yep. I mean, I would say, <laughs> I would do a I would that, that's an area I really a lot better with all of that. And yeah. I, Everything is down. If but we should do this all at once with all predator species, we would be looking at different things. Yeah, you know, but we, we, we said we can't enter all the population. Sure, everything out if we can. 
Mm -hmm. You, you can decide if with that context you don't want to do that. That's okay too. I mean, to me, if we were looking at people yeah. looking at people in the line, we're not looking at people in the right? Yeah. yeah. If you find a look at them, I'm just telling you. Yeah. The, 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 sure. But the, in this, with our time, you got it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not allowed to take this off. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Yeah. I was just saying that there's 15 wolf back in that area. Minimum. I think we're good with what we got. I think that's good. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. The B is entirely wilderness. It's entirely in the bottom of the problem. So that one, you know, you might have to think about if you're going to allocate extra quota there, it's going to be still. So they're going to go. Does anybody know what they're going to do? Does anyone know does it fill out? Yeah, that's I don't know. I think one thing that is 281281 I mean, you make a really good yeah. 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 not, I guess, what you're saying. Yeah. No. <laughs> how, how do you, how do you get to the radius? How do you um, ascertain what the problem is as far as your conservation is going? How do you get there? I mean, I mean, do you say, okay, mine? Yeah, it's or, generally never one. One thing it's usually a combination of things. So obviously, you know, predators take a certain amount of prey, habitat, weather, weather's probably for most things the biggest driver between park park enters droughts, particularly on deer, um, and everything like that. So I never look at it as just one cause and it's causing numbers. Yeah. It's always a combination. Uh, of things that combine together or resulting in that, or whatever. So, one may have a little bit more influence on other, but particularly in deer populations, a lot of times, weather is probably one of the biggest drivers of deer population. They're likely to begin with whatever over a 10 to 15 year time period, but weather than the habitat. And so, it, it kind of, I look at Kind of a combination of all things, whatever and stuff like that. Well, my question was is like, okay, yeah, I understand all the variables there, but we're focusing on lion. We're almost super focused on lion creating the problem. And so I think that if we consider it all the outside stuff, I mean, well, they did that. But yeah, you know, they yeah. did the lion study. Yeah, and I think the conclusion was 36, what is it, 36 percent was due to the lion, 11 bear, and right. five percent wolf, which is probably low. But, right. but we and what was there some unknown or something? There like 20. 20. I think that was just yeah. about 30 percent of the yeah. unknown yeah. population in that. We kind of, kind of have a yeah. new situation in the so elephant in the area, right. area where we have a Big influx of wool in the last two years. Two years. They just blew up. And uh, we may hear something different from the biologists, but it's guys that are out there every day. We see a new, whole new um, way the lines are behaving. They disappear in some areas. You don't find a track in the other areas. I mean, the wolves are shadowing them. Um, so, it, there's a whole new dynamic out there that we're not being able to take into consideration here. Yeah. Just in that one little area. Yeah. I think that's a conversation that we have with yeah. Adam yeah. outside of this group and our anticipates are seeing on a day-to-day basis. What are we doing this time? Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Cody. So we're just noticing 212 is on our list, but we're not seeing it. On the LMU, so we just wanted to double check that 211, 210, 216. So don't see so those are deer, 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 and they already got the right ones so up there. Um, what unit is that? That's 210. 210. 210. So just delete these two. So those all round into 210. Yeah. There's eight there. Yeah, 
that was like 30. Hey, 10 or something? 210, there's five and three. What was that? There's eight cats, five and three. No, two and two and five. Two right. So it should say 211, 212. Yeah. There's 210 and 211 on the quote I'm looking at. It's called a 210.05. And 210 as well. So those are elk units we're looking at on the left. And I'm going by the these are the lines now. Yes. So the line units are 211, 210, 210, 15 are all 10, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, Rather than the decrease, it's right. so the no changing units we can just leave off the employees, right? Yeah. 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 Great. Can you read these? There we go. Um, no. Yeah. Others for increasing or decreasing emphasis. Modelers, does this look, does it look a candle for you? How many tiers? How much profit? <laughs> okay. Well, so the ice is different. Yeah. 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 What we did find last time, it was very into this possibility. You don't have this scenario, but they had a, one of their scenarios for the 30 percent of the line. And when we had the Jessica area, uh, to reduce line populations in certain areas where uh, so it was big we put the harvest density at the same level that we had worked in the business because we're talking. And then when we allocated the rest of the quota that would be required to cause the 30% decline, it was actually a higher harvest density in the rest of the eco regions because to cause an overall 30% decline required a lot more harvest density. Yeah. 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 So if if so if you know change given that there's these are big areas, like for the 10% decline, we'll just have to see what it looks like. We'll show you what it looks like when we come back. It, it may not be possible to accomplish a 10% decline when you have all these areas where you want to enterprise. We'll just have to show you what that would look like if you're left with this double use to so you'll see it. I mean it'll be your choice, but we'll do our best to. So we're going to take another short break, about 10 minutes. Uh, remember, we have working lunch today. We'll be listening to the public comments during lunch. That's starting at 12, but I think we'll start eating just a few minutes before that. Okay. Is that projected? Or I, I think it'll be sure. on Zoom, I think. Yeah. Is that okay? Oh, okay. On the WP website? Mm -hmm. So back in ten. Anything you know? We have five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
in your ranking and weighting of the different objectives that we put together. Uh, so just like yesterday afternoon, you'll come to one of the five of us and we'll quickly write down your ranking of these objectives and what score you give them. So we'll do it. Uh, first, you're going to rank them. I think we've got eight objectives, so you'll just rank them in order seven, one through seven. But then you'll also be able to give them a score. So if you know two objectives want the same score, zero to 100, you can do that. So you'll have two different ways to rank them. Um, so yeah, that should be pretty quick and will get us to lunch. Uh, so you can come to Sarah, to me, to Molly, to Alyssa, to Justin, and uh, we'll help walk you through it. So uh, yeah, that, get started. Uh, put a chair next to Sarah. She's got a tie to the thing here.
come up time and again. We hear how important they are to this group. So we want to make sure that we take the next 30 minutes or so before lunch and really dive into those and make sure that we're uh, articulating those clearly and presenting them to the commission. Because um, what we're hearing is that you guys feel stuck where you've only got this one le lever in moving the mountain lion population, but it's this multidimensional problem. So let's spend a little time before lunch talking about the dimensions of that problem, what you'd like the commission to hear. Um, if there are any kind of sub recommendations that you want to uh, make that go beyond the charge around um, just mountain lions. Um, so the floor is sort of open for that um, from now until lunch and, and Sarah's pulling up our existing parking lot items. But um, yeah, we can have an open discussion about that. What else should we be talking about? What needs to be uh, heard by the commission around this topic? Uh, so the floor is open. So you're not talking this like we can talk about anything else. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, it's just pretty simple. I think everybody's in agreement. Like our deer herds are just simply annihilated with, um, you know, I think the seed, the current season was established back in the 40s. And, you know, a lot of things have changed since 1940. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't have the habitat, the amount of deer on the landscape to withstand the constant, uh, you know, hunting pressure. It's unfortunate because it's Montana's an opportunity state. It's really nice to grab your gun and archery and head out, but um, until the hunting hunter numbers get somehow get controlled, there's no way we'll ever have a. You know, we could kill every mountain lion in the state of Montana, and we still would not. The deer would not come back. Totally agree. agree with that. And and it's not only the hunters, but look at uh, our elk population now. They do compete. Um, our elk population in some areas are enormous. Uh, look at the whitetail. Who's all got gray beards here? Um, so twenty five years ago, when you're out deer hunting, what did you mainly see? Mule deer. You go out now, you're gonna, you know, see 90% whitetail. So they, they're pushing the meal. Uh, whitetail's more aggressive than a meal deer, so they're eating the same stuff, pushing. You know, the poor meal deer have a, you know, them throwing coyotes and that type of stuff. So there's a, they really have to look at, that, and that's probably the most unpopular thing they'll ever have to do, but. It's, unfortunately, it has to be. I have a question for you that may or may not be worth putting on there, but I'm curious because I've heard it come up from a couple of people. It's not my lane of expertise, so I lean on y'all. But I've heard concerns about um, younger hunters coming in not being as maybe ethically inclined or intelligent about what they're doing and i'm wondering is it or would it be a benefit to have some sort of i don't know class education mentorship something that helps to foster um what you are looking for in that up and coming class of countries to help shape the the ethics and the dynamic of your 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 sport and your profession there used to be, uh, is there still a sex education online course? Yeah, yeah, it's not, I, it's not required. Really. It's not required. But it's still if you look at it, it's not required. It might depend on that or when you're Somehow, let people know. A lot of people know the goals. And I think a lot of those older, younger guys, if they knew what we were, they probably would do it. It's so much, so I don't even know if it's still there. Yeah. So, like, that's how you do you want to increase awareness? Do you want to increase required education? Do you want to just increase the availability of educational resources, or do you want to do none of the above? I'm just um, curious what would be um, better for the future. Well, the experience in Canada to be a tracker, you have to go to multitude of schools. You have to know every animal, every bird, every plant. 
you have to be very involved in, in you know, ecosystem. And that's not my talk about a little bit yesterday about education and educate the public. And in any way we can do it, give me anything to learn how to appreciate it before they get out there. I mean, we all have the benefit of being born and raised in it. You know, a lot of these guys coming in from Minnesota or whatever, they don't know how it worked. You know, so maybe you got a considerable amount of what years in the pursuit too that has been you, you've learned it in the field, you know, or maybe right. you had a mentor. But how do you pass that uh, yeah. generational knowledge? I don't think you can make the requirement because then you're in a rabbit hole where the guy that wants to go take the bird dog out and not take a test to identify a duck, and then you know, I don't know if you're required to work with that. I don't know how you do learn this. I might even say a little bit. I think we'd like to see it. We just don't. We can't. Oh, we have to. We can. Yeah, what would be the way to do it that makes for Jewish people for the right regulations for extended to go take your mountain identification course online? <laughs> Maybe it's there. I don't know. I think we could prepare, right? For people that have you know, you know, brand new bear tag, right? They yeah. all have to yeah. you know, the, like, yeah. bear, yeah. 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 black bear and hundred yeah. bear. Yeah. yeah. This could make some sense as far as you don't want spots on it, but okay. would that be more like education, not like not like maybe teaching the ethics more correct? The value you're not going to pass it on to the owner. In some cases, yeah, and I didn't target you know, the other community. Right, we've been able to teach that. Yeah. That's that would be good. Yeah. 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 Because there's a, a buffalo hunting video, I think they have to review mm -hmm. before they yeah. buy buffalo. Yeah. Probably yeah. wouldn't be a little, if you've got two, three, I mean, watch that video before you've been good. There's a place to There's a lot of, a lot of different ways to identify lions and what they are. I mean, females for sure. Um, rough colored, black baby spot, stuff like that, you know. I mean, they may have hair, but they may be rough colored, so it's not far from black if at all. But, you know, there's all those kinds of shame that come and can get together and have a little get together and make a list of stuff that, that works for them. You know, maybe we could just do a little handout, you know, with a tag. I think by the time we get up, I think by the time that kid gets to that 10, 12 year old stage, they're already set from by their parents or whoever, whether they're going to be more ethical than others or not. I mean, I don't know, but they have that mentor program, Fish and Wildlife, where you take your 10 year old and they get on for two years with just with you mentoring them. So it kind of comes down to that personal responsibility, I think. It is, and I think it'll be interesting to see how long the, the mountain hand phenomenon continues. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah I've seen, I've seen an uptick of stuff in the last five years because of the TV show. Right? Yeah, that makes it look so easy to go to. You know, um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I've seen it in Boulder actually. I go get goes and gets out, doesn't even make it seem because there's something in the ass to take care of. You know, get it. He's like, no, not for me. Not going to do that. But how long is this not man phenomenon thing going to be? Continuing, I think we still keep seeing this update. The title that law. So, how many how training licenses? I mean, that's a good question. Is how many how many licenses have been issued over the last five years? Have you seen a trend there about it? You know, um, I'd be interested to see that. Yeah, like maybe, maybe we have it. Maybe just maybe we're perceiving it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing it at the local level. Is yeah. that really what's going on? I mean, me personally, with my kids. I'm 50%. One likes the other one thinks I'm stupid. Right. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Why don't you think these things? Right. Yeah. yeah. Social media has had a, a negative impact on them, probably more than positive. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah. Like all the TV shows. TV shows. Yeah. You got that show. thousand yard gun guys that right. don't want to shoot a hundred yards. Right. Yeah. 
All the way up to the yard bow shop. Everything buzz right here. Yeah. Black and yellow. Required to be locked prior to getting the license. I think that one guy said, is it an unreasonable ask? Is it actually doing the same? Heavy lift here is it easier? So, how does it look on your side? Please something like that. You have to take the trim. No, it's so how do you do this right now? But, you know, it's hard to say how, 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 how heavy the lift would be. Um, <clears throat> there's some things, um, kind of thinking about not so much Montana, but some of the other states I'm familiar with. <clears throat> One of the challenges with so many mandatory, you know, things that you put in place is oftentimes that can be a deterrent. To getting people to engage in what it is you're, you're if you're trying to recruit people to start doing things to make something mandatory can be a deterrent. That, that's just one more reason they don't get engaged. Um, having said that, <clears throat> there are a number of things. Um, uh, I'm thinking about uh, sheep hunting in some of the other states um, where there'll be. You know, you've got a or bear hunting, you know, there's a mandatory you have to watch this. Um, and so depending on how tailored the mandatory thing is, it may not be a particularly heavy lift. Yeah. Um, but the, the mandatory part does require authorization. It's unclear because we got into this with the wolf trap recommendation stuff where you did not actually have the authority to be doing that. And that actually required legislation. So it was going to make something like this mandatory it would either require commission or legislative action. It can't be just this department of mandatory. We just successfully got trapper education through it. it. Took five attempts in 20 years yeah. to get it through the legislature. And we're, we're implementing it as we speak. It, it is not an easy lift. Right. And sometimes when it does require some type of legislative action, you can have the you know, someone that supports it, it's clearly written. Um, you've got supporters, and by the time it gets out the other end, it doesn't look entirely like what you started with. And it, when it involves legislation, that can be not an easy move. Yeah, it's a, be careful what you wish for, because what happens is the other side, because what I'll tell you is everyone, for the most part, at this table is conservationists. We hunt, we trap, we fish. The other side weighs in, and suddenly they want part of the education process. And what I'll tell you is ethics means a lot of things to a lot of different people. There's a considerable amount of the public that does not support you stuffing a cat up a tree mm -hmm. and then jumping him out and running him again. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> and that is unethical to a significant portion of people. Let's talk real reality. So be very careful what you have the opportunities for this guy. You know, I do think that the part of how I created the video. That's not mandatory. So that would just be an allocation of resources. That would be within the three years of the record. So you can do it and then you can fix it and be there as a resource. Yeah. But they would have to agree to spend the staff and time and yeah. money to make it, which, you know, be one of a million priorities. So I have to implement yeah. who the director was. And all that. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. still a lot, but a lighter lot can try to let them go. I'd be short, but now I'm Yeah, because we did it with like, there's input from folks to make sure that it's correct and serves everyone. Yeah, for the service and like, seems like a good people to put it. So Sarah reminded me we've got a good list of parking lot items up on the screen. So oh. feel free to refer to those, see what we've captured, see what's missing. Um, we've been talking about this for yeah. a bit. So yeah. just, I, I think that falls under maximized public support for land hunting. I mean, that's to me the most yeah. important thing. Yeah. yeah. For I mean, if, if we lose hound hunting, we lost everything we've discussed in the last two days and well in the next future. I mean. And especially fathers here don't want to see their kids be able to do this. I mean, Washington lost it, Oregon lost it, California lost it. It's been talked about in Arizona and Colorado. New Mexico right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's the, everything that the optics know. around doing that as well will play well with people who may be opposed to what you do as well. Because if you're taking steps and 
the trouble to try to educate people to make them as ethical and effective as possible when they're doing them, then that the opposite of that are quite good. So it works to that maximize the public support share. Oh, these are just comments that we can give the commission, right? Yeah. Do you have anything about the other creditors in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. the very bottom sentence. Mm -hmm. All the coyotes to other creditors. I think that's a map that we were trying to see over in the room. Please keep it hard. We need a full section. Yeah, that should be, that should be, the, num that should be um, that should be the number one parking lot item. We we need a multi-faceted <laughs> <laughs> Because then the lion this lion conversation would be this big. Honestly, yeah. it, I mean, it, it places significant factors in key areas. There's so many areas that it really doesn't. Okay. Yeah, that's like well, underline the talents, whatever you want to do. You do all of this, but you can still get the colors off. Yeah. 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 It is, and we're tasked to I mean, speak to other, you know, predators and stuff like that that are licenses aren't needed for, you know, proactive with you know, deer populations in Kyle. You know, like, problem is there's, you know, Kyle derbies and stuff around the state, but they end up getting a lot of backlash from organizations. Um, that don't truly really understand the reason for those. Most of those calendars happen January, February, March, which is calving season. You know, it happens a lot of ranch stuff, but it also has to do with deer and elk on the original range. And that's where it concentrated at. So, I mean, predator control is more like, oh, we can, we're limited on some stuff by the rules on what we can do. Um, but how do we address how do we address a coyote issue with your populations? And what where where can we go with that? I mean, I think the coyote numbers would come down if the price of fur was a little higher. People right? would show yeah, yeah, that's kind of driven by the market. Driven by the market. Yeah. 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 And that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. That's fine. We can't control that right now. So we're. For the public watch, I'm not going to say there or anything to that. But seriously, in these areas where their onions are structured and, and they're falling, you know, if we would look at strategically targeting those kyanas specifically. I'll give you a case in example 2005. We did a deal where we went in and I, we shot 16 kyanas out of there. We did a study on. Whiskey Mountain, the big one sheep, and the lambing success went up 26 percent because every coyote I cut open on the ground is chock full of the big one sheep. And I think just by targeting those specific coyotes all you, during a specific time of year, whether it be a winter range or the lambing range, you can increase your ungulates. And like Warren, I believe he said, it you know, reducing some marriage even for a year, that you get that age class that comes through and it starts succeeding, and you can help your ungulate populations. Of course, I feel like I around the entire thing is like they bounce back crazy fast. So, yeah. with the cats, you pull them all out and three to five years right back where you were. I'm curious how quick the bounce back is for coyotes because it's like almost however heavy handed yeah. you are, yeah. you're going to get them all back. How fast does that happen? It, 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 it happens within weeks. I don't know about you guys in other areas, but like in Boulder, we a couple times a year our trappers yeah. they go and fly the bat. It's crazy if you're in cat out in the cabin season. They're going to fly and they're going to do things, you know, take care of problem populations, things like that. You need more of a budget for that because they're always they're limited on how, how often they can do predator control based on their budget. Well, I think well, that's it's 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 federal it's federal it's it is. It's federal, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Well, it is federal, but you probably have better uh, words. I, I guess one thing I'll say about the kindness is they're not under department regulation. So right. there is nothing limiting anybody taking kind of anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, that's exactly. outside of 
Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Parks of Puerto Rico. And we do provide funding wildlife services annually to uh, control pilots in places where there are concerns over fishing. Uh, that already happens. So it might, like what you're doing now, it might help if you could be more specific. Like with coyotes, I don't know what else could be done, but with wolves, uh, if there's some regulation or some area where something could be liberalized, I mean, like what else could happen? I guess. <laughs> Well, well, to find well, how about 313 and a quota of six? Yeah, uh, you can you know the story of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that that's a specific battle that's been going on for a while, but everywhere else is like yeah. really well, I, I know that Article 9, Section 7 of the Montana Constitution <laughs> state the ability to harm itself wherever we preserve the citizens of the state, not Yellowstone National Park, and not out of state will That's what I know. Yeah. <laughs> I often thought about coyotes and probably big predators, but I don't have it out there. I mean, you take this first instant tree eight, how many coyotes are in that? Compare that to how many lions are in there. And for the most part, the coyotes make predators. More meat than the lions are tree eight by far. And so that, that kind of educational thing right there. If we got that option, probably would take pressure off of the other predators to publicly and ones in their mind, you know. But I mean, people are looking about it. Coyotes really probably are number one consumer of meat out there. You know, there's just thousands of that thing. I mean, everywhere we go, this is going to be thousands of coyotes. It did. Public perception right now is that coyote or lion, wolves, bears take the brunt of the heat for killing all the alligators. And it's just, I mean, they're a great part of it, but it's certainly not all of it. Become the second one, right? On the ground in the next six years, we kind of worked on that. Pretty bad deal. Good statement, right? But if it doesn't kill, right? And that's something I brought up. And they said, well, it doesn't matter if your cold doesn't kill. And like it does when you're trying to harvest it by lion and they were there. And let's, I mean, so, speaking to that, just talking here earlier, let's look at, let's look at 380 as an example. They raised the quota, we found out, by five miles. There's still no more access in the Elkhorns than there was before. We are literally limited by one road, essentially, on a couple spin-offs here that get you a little bit. Literally one road from the top of Boulder Hill to the south end that you can hunt. There's no access. So the population that you're targeting are your younger population, all those big cats that they are. And, it, and, it, and that's just the Boulder site. And that holds true on the east side, coming from Townsend, Raidersburg, that up into the Trill Creek, Indian Creek area. Um, the north end up in like Montana City, you've got basically one road really kind of that runs along the top. You can go up Clancy, come down. There's a huge section of that area in 380 that is roadless unaccessible. Is that forest river or DLM? It's a combination of both. Well it goes back to the I think it was in the late 80s when they did a they did a thing where they closed down it was a it was a group effort between FWP, BLM and and a, it was a study group and it's all considered winter range. Okay. So they just basically shut down. So you can get up a little bit, but you can't get to, there's no access to that center stuff. That meaning, you, you, I mean, okay, you got there's roads in there, they're all closed, so you can't drive. But if you think you're going to walk from the bottom up over the top and catch up with your dogs, good luck. You know, that's, a, that's no, it's a no man's land. You are 20 miles either way from the center point 
20 miles out that you are you have no access to. So when we start talking about you know population, you know, it, it feeds into all right, population, you know, by targeting certain populations, you can't. Right. You can't target those populations to run up access. Well, all, the, all those wildlife management areas are like that. Those yep. ranges exactly. they shut you out with create meat locker for all the yep. Yeah. We yep. got well all those lions and wolves are in there. Yep, they're in there. Absolutely. That's where food is. See them on video. See them on game cam all the time. Grizzly bears. Glad you mentioned food. Let's keep this conversation <laughs> going. Grab lunch, and come back to the table, and wait for the public to. Right, but I think I think we kind of hamstrung a little bit on. <laughs> that we don't want to, yeah, we know it want to get accomplished, but okay, they raised the quota by six by five. Okay, so we're going to have
Done it. We've reached the end of public comment. Thank you. The public has grilled us. We've answered all their questions. Perfect. So great job. Uh, no, but so I um, wanted to mention one thing. There's a reporter here. Would you introduce yourself? Oh, certainly. Yes. Um, James Verdeen. I'm the editor of the Uh And so just here to check things out, see hear what they have to say on the line. It's true. It's a hot button thing, certainly in our community. Um, so looking forward to hearing what comes out. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you, Dave. You feel free to take it with James. We've reached our goals for this session. We're there. We've done it. We've got everything we need to move forward. So we have an option now if folks would like to keep discussing and um, you know, elaborating on our parking lot issues, we can do that. Or we can wrap up now that folks are ready to go. So um, I'll leave it up to you and um, we'll go from there. Yeah. Where's our next meeting going to be? October, I believe 14 and 15, Ross and Bernard, mid October. And you can get Lubrick in the Black Clip, Lubrick Experimental Forest. Where is it? Lubrick Experimental Forest in the Black Clip. Water, water, yeah, stuff. Yeah, you go for a hike and buy mountains. Yeah, yeah. 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 You said there's no. I'm assuming you were sending direction, but I mean, yeah, nobody yeah. showed up. Yeah, that's good. They show up. They could show up here or online, and we got neither. So nobody. Yeah. Nobody cares. We're staying there, or we driving? Yeah. What's so, so I'll give you guys all the details for the next okay. meeting, but all the lodging will be provided on location. Um, we'll have all the food brought in for you guys, and we'll be feeding you throughout the duration. But everybody will be staying on site. So the Muslim will close and wants to commute. And we'll have uh, an agenda that will send out as well. So you know, okay. I mean, I'm down to adjourn. Well, that was easy. Well, let me just say one last thing, which is thank you. Thank yeah, you for thank being you. here. Thank you for your work. You guys are great. Yeah, Appreciate it. Thanks you for yeah. guiding this to like keep yeah. it moving in a good way. See you next time. Yeah. <laughs>